rainbow. Bo Schembechler's Wolverines are closing in on another New Year's in Pasadena, and they still fashion national title intentions. This successful onside kick against UCLA helped put Michigan on track after a season-opening loss to Notre Dame. Seven weeks later, Michigan exploded in Champaign against Illinois. Tony Bowles broke into the clear to put Michigan atop the heap in the Big Ten race. The Golden Gophers of Minnesota made a habit of playing the Wolverines tough. In 86, this Chip Low Miller field goal dropped Michigan from the ranks of the unbeaten. Head coach John Gutekunst is now at his fourth year at the Gopher Helm. His team is led by one of the nation's most prolific running backs in Daryl Thompson. It is on his shoulders Minnesota harbors hopes of a postseason bowl. But today, bragging rights attached to the little brown jug are at stake as Michigan meets Minnesota. We welcome you to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, home today of the Minnesota Golden Gophers as they take on the third-ranked Michigan Wolverines. And as we turn down the stretch of the Big Ten race, take a look at the standings. Michigan unbeaten in conference play, 8-1 overall. The Golden Gophers break even in the league, 5-4 and four overall. An upset of Michigan would most surely propel the Gophers into the bowl picture. And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Wayne Larrabee with Stan White. Michigan well-established, of course. But Minnesota's a program under John Gutekunst on the way back. And Coach Gutekunst told us yesterday what his team needs is a win over a good program. Michigan, to say the least, is that good program. But Minnesota also is going to try to run the football on Michigan. And Michigan's the best team in stopping the run of the Big Ten. Number one in the Big Ten, Wayne. And they've held their last seven opponents to under 100 yards a game. But, as John Gutekunst has pointed out, those seven opponents have lost to Michigan because they can't run the football. He thinks they have to run it against Michigan to be effective, and they have good reason to think they can because they have number 39, Darrell Thompson, who two years ago ran for over 200 yards against this Michigan team, the only back ever to do that, including a 98-yard touchdown run, the longest in Big Ten history. And Michigan feels that Darrell Thompson, not Anthony Thompson, is the best back in the Big Ten. Now, in order to run, they're going to have to stop the middle of that Michigan slanting defense. There's the nose guard, number 91, Mike Teeter. You don't hear a lot about him except when you talk to the coaches. He's not big, but he's quick and strong, and he's perfect for penetration in the middle of, again, that slanting defense that Michigan has used for years and years, ever since Bo Schembechler has got at Michigan. Well, right off the top, Stan, we talked about the Rose Bowl situation. Minnesota is hopeful of making it to the Copper Bowl, feel they need a win here today, but there's more at stake. These two teams get fired up playing for an ancient trophy called the Little Brown Jug. Everybody's heard of the Little Brown Jug, and the players love to carry it off the field after the game, especially Minnesota. They would love to have that because that means they have beaten Michigan and it would actually make their season for them. Of course, though, Wayne, Michigan has won 10 out of the last 11 years. <laughs> That's right. And Bo Schembechler is closing in on at least a tie for his 13th Big Ten title. College football Saturday, Michigan at Minnesota, is brought to you by the American Gas Association. Gas, America's best energy value. By Casio's Boss, the pocket-sized business organizer scheduling system. And by Option Gray, coverage for Ben, the advanced way to get rid of the gray. Wayne Larrabee and Stan White were inside the Metrodome. And Minnesota and Michigan getting set to do battle. Let's take a look at the Rose Bowl possibilities here in the Big Ten. We're going to take it right from the top. Michigan, scenario number one. If they defeat Minnesota and Ohio State loses today to Wisconsin, the Wolverines go to Pasadena regardless of what happens next week. Actually, Michigan only has to defeat Ohio State in its last two regular season games to earn the trip to Pasadena. Now, there are other possibilities for other teams. Illinois. Well, if they defeat Indiana and Northwestern and Ohio State knocks off Michigan and Wisconsin, there's a three-way tie. Illinois would go because Michigan would be eliminated. They went to the Rose Bowl last year. Then you revert to a, a two-team tiebreaker system whereby Illinois holds an early season victory over Ohio State. The Illini would go to Pasadena. 
Now, Illinois, if they win just one of their last two, have to hope that Michigan loses its last two and Ohio State loses to Wisconsin. Remote possibility. <laughs> Slim, to say the least. Ohio State's possibilities defeat Wisconsin and Michigan, and they need some help. They need Illinois to lose one of its last two. And Illinois plays Indiana today, which will be a battle, let me tell you. Yes, sir. Illinois coming in off that game off of Michigan uh, with some injuries. Now, another Ohio State scenario. If they defeat Michigan, Illinois loses its last two, and Minnesota defeats Michigan. Even remoter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, the coaches, there's Bo Schembechler in his 21st year on the right side of John Gutekunst on the left side of your screen in his fourth year here at Minnesota. The Golden Gophers won the toss, and they will receive. Chris Gator is one of the best in the Big Ten and back deep to receive this kick. There's a look at Gators, and J.D. Carlson has it on the tee. Carlson hasn't missed in 12 field goal attempts this year and he's kicking off to start the ball game here this afternoon. Michigan of the solid whites. Minnesota in the maroon and we're underway. It's Gators from the 10. Gators kind of picking his way almost slow motion out to about the 24. Rusty Fitzner and John Vaughn made the stop. Now let's hey, take a look at today's Sears diehard starting lineup. Take a look at Minnesota's quarterback Scott Schaffner. He has been struggling recently. Daryl Thompson uh, closing in on a thousand yard season. It would be his third here at Minnesota. Gators great speed. Tinglehoff his father played for the Vikings. Shane Strain is a good sized target at tight end. Chris Thome an excellent athlete at the center position. And the guards uh, Hendrickson. And then there's uh, Limata who's a very fine tackle. Minnesota on first down. Strain is the open man, and he's out of bounds at about the 35, 36-yard line. Gain of about 11. Alex Marshall forced him out of the near side. First down, Minnesota. There's Mike Teeter. We talked about him. A key to what Michigan does up front. Evans and Hutchinson. Evans very active at that defensive tackle spot. Marshall and Abrams. Abrams uh, in on a lot of plays. Anderson is a very fine inside linebacker. Key and plate. Rip Wellburn was named All-America this week by Kodak. First and 10, Minnesota. The football just across the 35. That's Tinglehoff in motion. And this is Daryl Thompson. Met by Evans and Teeter. And Thompson plowed ahead for a couple of yards out near the 37-yard line. Well, John Kudikus also said yesterday that passing on first down would be a part of their game plan because... Obviously, Michigan plays a straight zone defense on first down. You can read it a lot easier. Here's Teeter in the middle. See a control the center, knocks him back. Just a great job. We'll see a lot of that matchup today. The center can't handle Teeter any better than that. Anthony, I mean, uh, Daryl Thompson's going to have a hard time. I lose that bet. And the Minnesota people say Thom's a, a good athlete. They feel he can handle Teeter, and he can at least do an adequate job. He did not on that play. Daryl Thompson gets the call up the middle, prowling forward once again. Evans once again in on that stop, along with J.J. Uh, Grant and Eric Anderson. We'll take another look at Mike Teeter in the middle. They're going to do different things for him. Watch this time, a double team. Now, again... You can handle a nose guard with a double team, but that's going to leave somebody else free on single blocking or to come from the backside. Minnesota facing a third down. About three yards to go. Just underway. First period and scoreless. Steve Rem in motion. Tinglehoff makes the reception for a first down. The Minnesota people feel that Michigan will give you some things. They may take away the run, but they'll give you the short passing game. Well, they're going to do the short possession passing, the hitch patterns. Watch Pat Tinglehoff just come down and stop at about six yards for the first down. That's an easy completion. Michigan gives you that. It makes you take that play, but you got to complete it. And somewhere along the line, they'll blitz, they'll knock the ball down, they'll stop you on a drive. From the Minnesota 48, first down for Schaffner and company. Schaffner off play action under pressure. Gets it away to Rem. First down at the Wolverine 26 yard line. Beta Murray chased him out. 26 yard gain. And I'll tell you what, the quarterback Schaffner showed some mobility getting away from Chris Hutchinson on the rush. John Kudik has told us that Schaffner has problems throwing on the run. They like to go to straight drop back. Here's a play action, but watch number 97 come in free, Chris Hutchinson, but does not make the play. Schaffner throws off his back foot down the sideline, but a perfect pass right to the receiver as he goes out of bounds. Steve Rem for a first down, a big play. Thompson with a long setback. Tinglehoff in motion now. 
Schaffner to Gators. He's down to the 20 yard line. Gain of about six or seven yards. Todd Plate had the coverage on the far side. This is not surprising, though, talking to Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, saying they've had problems with the first drive all year because teams come out and break all the tendencies that they study all week. They do things differently formationally, run and pass situations. Michigan, Minnesota is mixing it up, and uh, Michigan will adjust as the game goes along. Second down and four. Schaffner, four of four, 49 yards of passing. Gators in motion. Well, you can hear the popping all the way up here as Daryl Thompson got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a half yard. Mike Evans has been very active in the interior out of Roxbury, Massachusetts. John Gutekunst, head coach in his fourth year here at Minnesota. Michigan Wayne slants when they're on the hash like they are right now to the wide side of the field with a great preponderance. And you saw they tried to go back away from the slant that time with Daryl Thompson, but Michigan is able to hold the gaps. Michigan in pass defense ranks fourth of the Big Ten, giving up 192 yards a game. Minnesota facing a third down and four. Passing situation. Rem in motion. Schaffner. And he drills it into Shane Strain, the tight end, for a first down near the 12-yard line of the Wolverines. Anderson and J.J. Grant on the stop. They were close to pulling. Scott Schaffner. They wanted to see how he started, and he started fast. Watch his throw. A bullet just before the linebacker, Eric Anderson, number 37, can get to the ball. Here's Mike Teeter again. Well, see the game, the loop around? He comes free, but who picks him up? Anthony Thompson. I mean, dang it, Daryl Thompson. Daryl Thompson, you're the first on the crew today to do that. <laughs> I knew that would happen. Wishbone formation now for the Gophers. Schaffner. Going to the corner of the end zone, and he overshot his intended receiver, Patrick Cummings. David Key in the coverage down the left side. Schaffner off to a good start here on this first drive, to say the least. Five of six, 57 yards. Well, here's a key play, though. Second and 10. This is a tough situation. They're a running football team. They passed when Michigan thought they were going to run and been effective. Now can they throw? But Michigan expects him to pass. Profile of the two head coaches here today. Second and ten now for Minnesota. Gators in motion. Has great speed. So does Daryl Thompson to the six-yard line of Michigan on a gain of about seven. J.J. Grant and Eric Anderson, the two inside linebackers, I mentioned both very active, made the stop. Again, keeping Michigan off balance. When they should be passing the ball, they're running the ball. Michigan has to react back from their pass defense and not in time to stop Daryl Thompson from the seven-yard gain. Of course, Anthony Thompson is one of the leading uh, uh, candidates for the Heisman Trophy and set an NCAA record last week with 377 yards. So the two Thompsons, outstanding running backs in the Big Ten Conference. Third down. Daryl Thompson with determination, and I believe he has a first and goal at the one-yard line of Michigan. Beta Murray made the stop. Beta Murray is an excellent defensive back, but he cannot bring down Daryl Thompson one-on-one -on -one to stop him for the first down. A counter play. Get the linebackers going. You see the two linebackers actually ran into each other. Now here's Beta Murray at the five. He gets down almost to the one. That's a powerful back. One thing about Daryl Thompson, they say he's bigger and faster than Anthony Thompson. That's why Michigan feels he's an all-around better back. Cummings and Thompson the backfield. First and goal. Touchdown, Daryl Thompson. Tell you, Wayne, talking to Daryl Thompson yesterday, talking to the Minnesota team. They were not in awe of Michigan. You see, they slant to that side, knowing he'd get the ball going that direction, but they still could not stop him. Good cutoff blocks at the line. There's the point after. And it is good by Brent Berglund. Minnesota leading 7-0. Watch the low blocks. They just want to get them tied up and then let Daryl Thompson run over people. That time over, J.J. Grant took him right over top, ran over the lead linebacker for Michigan. 
He got into the end zone for the touchdown. Only the fourth touchdown on the ground against Michigan this year. Midwinter. College football Saturday. Michigan at Minnesota is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Peak Antifreeze and Summer Coolant. Wayne Larrabee, Stan White, there's Michigan coach Bo Beckler. his team down 7-0 after the first offensive thrust of the afternoon by Minnesota. Impressive drive by the Gophers, 76 yards and 12 plays, and Daryl Thompson took it over from a yard away, and they took 4 minutes and 52 seconds off the clock. Time of possession for Minnesota be very important here today. Six passes by Schaffner and six runs by Thompson on that touchdown drive. Gophers set to restart the game. Aaron Pipehorn on the kickoff. Good leverage into it. And backing up deep, that's Desmond Howard. Out to close to the 20-yard line, Doug Evans, a senior out of Montgomery, Alabama, made the stop on the play. Take a look at the uh, Michigan offense. Michael Taylor, he can run the football, he can option it, he's a good passer. Tony Bowles, the explosive one. Callaway McMurtry, great blockers, good speed at wide receiver. Walker, big target at tight end. And a massive offensive line. Steve Everett in the middle, perhaps the smallest uh, offensive lineman. Dingman and Elliott, very big. Screpinex, 240 pounds at tackle. This is one of the biggest lines in the country. 300. 340 pounds. <laughs> what did I say, 240? If he was 240, he wouldn't be there. It's only 100 pounds <laughs> difference. <laughs> yeah, right, give or take 100 or so. First down for the Wolverines. Taylor, a long count of the line. And he looks to the air. Knocked down by Miles. Eddie Miles playing left end. He's only 234 as a former safety for the Gophers. Let's take a look at the defense for you for Minnesota. Coughlin at Sunbolt. Sunbolt perhaps the most dominating of the defensive linemen. Miles just knocked down that pass. Very active former safety. Stats makes a lot of plays in the middle of the linebacking court. Stevens and Getz active outside. Then you've got Foggy and Fisher, the cornerbacks. Foggy, three interceptions. Lumpkin and Jackson get the start at safety. Second down attempt for Michigan from the 20-yard line. Desmond Howard in motion. Taylor again looks to the air. Leap and grab. McMurtry cannot hang on. Derek Fisher, redshirt freshman out of Miami, made an undercut move. Minnesota was afraid of McMurtry going deep early. Well, this is a deep, deep out. The ball hung in the air for Michael Taylor from a long time, but not fooled Derek Fisher. He stays with him, does not get turned in his back pedal, can make the hit on McMurtry and knock the back, knock the ball out. The key was he never turned his shoulders, otherwise he could have never reacted back and quick, uh, quick enough. Third and ten. to Bowles in the flat. And the Minnesota defense contained. Bowles out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Mark it to the 27, pick up of seven, and he's three short of the first down. Jackson and Steven, and the coverage on the near side. So Michigan forced to punt. Talk about breaking tendencies. You would expect Michigan to mix a couple of runs in that first three play. Both teams have gone to the air early, sort of loosen up the defense to make them more susceptible to their running game. Chris Stapleton is a freshman, true freshman from Springfield, Illinois. Gators back deep. From the 15. Hit by Trip Welburn, among others. Rusty Fincher was also there. Minnesota will start at the 26-yard line, 56-yard punt, 10-yard return. Minnesota carries the early going. Wayne Larrabee and Stan White back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The series between these two teams, it goes way back. Michigan leading it and has dominated recently. And a little bit about the Little Brown Jug. The series for the Jug began in 1903, a meeting between Fielding Yo's famed point of minute team and the powerful Minnesota squad. In those days, water carts were unheard of, and Michigan was worried about the fact that Minnesota was going to supply its water. So what they did was they sent out one of the managers to go buy a jug. We'll bring our own water into the stadium. The jug they bought, and there it is. They placed it down. It served its purpose. After the game was over, Minnesota fans stormed the field. Michigan exited quickly. The jug was left behind. Minnesota calls up a week later, says, we've got your little brown jug. Come up here and win it from us. 
Daryl Thompson forced out of bounds on first down. Gain of almost eight yards. David Key forced him out of the near side. And they've been battling over the jug ever since. But I should mention, you saw on the jug, there was a lapse 1903 to 1909. There was a six-year lapse there because the first game ended in a 6-6 tie. And it was such a bloodbath that was so brutal that the two sides severed athletic ties. That's when Teddy Roosevelt was saying football was too brutal to play, wasn't it? That's right. I believe it was. <laughs> Second down for Minnesota. A little bit more than two yards to go. Thompson nabbed in the backfield. He lost a yard. T.J. Osmond and Eric Anderson on the stop for Michigan. Osmond in for Teeter on this uh, series. Another excellent middle guard. There's Daryl Thompson, the 200 yards. There's Teeter on the sideline. I'm sure he wants to get back in there. Again, you saw that play was made by T.J. Osmond because they slanted and were slanting towards the way that Thompson was running. Tough to do that. That means you've got to cut back quickly, and Thompson wasn't able to do it. Gophers are 3-3 three of three on third down conversions. They're facing third down at about five. Thompson, nowhere to go. J.J. Grant met him in the hole from the linebacking door, and T.J. Osmond on the defensive line. One of the things Michigan has been talking about all week is a letdown. The big game against Illinois last week. They had to win to stay in the Rose Bowl pitcher. They play Ohio State, their rival team next week. This game in between had Bo Schembechler considered from an emotional standpoint. Brent Erbel, there are the numbers on him. Trip Welburn back deep, the All-American. Michigan's 92nd first team All-America selection. Welburn makes a couple of nice moves across the 40 to the 41-yard line where Michigan will put it in play first and 10. John Leverance made the stop for Minnesota. 39-yard punt, 12-yard return. We have 7.33 to go in the first, and Minnesota leads Michigan. Michigan's worst loss this century came at the hands of the Minnesota program back in 1935 our score right now. Minnesota leading 7-0. First down for Michigan Wolverines. This is Tony Bowles. Into the clear for a first down in Gopher territory near the 41-yard line. Fred Foggy forced him out of bounds. Fred, the cousin of former University of Minnesota quarterback standout Ricky Foggy. 17-yard gain. He saw 6.3 per attempt. That leads the Big Ten, and here's why. Full of big plays is Tony Bowles. Second play last week, 73 yards down to the one against Illinois, and he breaks one off early here against uh, Minnesota. He's had, now he's down on the ground, though. That could be a big loss to uh, Michigan. He's had runs, Wayne, this year of 91, 64, 46, and 39 for touchdowns. He's had an 85-yard kickoff return. He's caught a 45-yard touchdown pass. And, of course, we just mentioned the 73-yard run to the uh, one-yard line. You know, I'll tell you something, Stan. Watch this. He combines power and speed better than any back I've seen this year. Here's the hit on the sideline. Can we see what may the injury be? That's tough to say. Anytime yeah, you go really down on turf, that. it looks like he may have uh, either stretched that knee a little bit. Of course, look at that. He's got tennis shoes on. You see the bottoms of those right. shoes? Everybody's going to tennis shoes so they don't rip so hard on this turf because if the grip gets implanted in the turf and it gets hit what gives are the ligaments and of course that's a, they're checking for a, a knee problem on Tony Bowles hopefully it's not serious now they'll never go to grass here they can't inside the Metrodome Don't but around never. the big tent well <laughs> all right but around the big tent the technology is not with us to grow grass indoors yet but around the Big Ten, Michigan in a couple of years will be going to grass. Ohio State's going to grass next year. Iowa did it this year. First down for Michigan at the 42. Ford replacing Bowles, picking up yardage on a straight-ahead move. The thing about Ford and Jared Bunch, they mentioned their versatility. Ford can play either the tailback or fullback spot, and Jared Bunch has seen action at both positions as well. And there's Tony Bowles on the bench right now. They lose Tony Bowles, but they get Leroy Hoard, who's not bad himself. In fact, he was the most valuable player in last year's Rose Bowl when he gained 142 yards on 19 carries. Tough runner, and he will punish people. Second and five. Hoard. Picked up initially by Getz. Hoard got by Getz and picked up two more yards down to about the 34-yard line where Michigan faces a third and two. 
One thing that's emblematic of a running team is the size of their tight end. Derek Walker is 6'1 and 250. But Ron Getz that time, who plays over the tight end every play at 6'3", 230, handled Walker well, kept his leverage, and made the tackle on Leroy Horde. All right, they're wrapping the knee now. That does not look good for Tony. Third down of two for Michigan. Howard in motion. Jared and Bunch. Man, he'll take three guys with him for a first down. Close to the 30-yard line. Leverance and Jackson in on the stop. Take a look at what's going on around college football. 7-0 Minnesota over Michigan here. And there's Auburn and Georgia. Auburn, 11th ranked team in the nation. And they're still in the race in the SEC with Alabama. Duke closing in on its, what, first bowl in 18 years for Duke, it would be if they win. And uh, Louisville leading Boston College. Howard Schnellenberger trying to, Schnellenberger trying to bring that program back. First down, just outside the 30. Gain of about five yards on the plow once again. Leroy Holt make that uh, Jared Bunch. Anthony Bryant, the defensive end in on the stop. Another area you'll find a lot of size as we look at Tony Bowles is at the fullback position on a running team because he's almost a guard in the backfield. Bunch 6'2", 241 pounds. He missed uh, three games earlier because of a knee problem. He came back, he had arthroscopic surgery. In fact, it was five games that he missed. He came back three games ago. But he's a big part of this offense. Second down, a gain of six on the previous play. Bunch. They are starting to really bruise some people around out there. Bowles has a bruised kneecap from what we understand. Anthony Bryant again in on the tackle for Minnesota. Again, that's falling on the hard turf way. And you get bruised kneecaps, you get skinned elbows, you get hyperextended uh, joints on the uh, artificial turf. We were talking to Hayden Fry last week. That statistic that he told us, 19 surgeries last year, none this year after the change to grass is an amazing statistic. Michigan into the wishbone now, and third down in a yard. Unbalanced to the left. Jefferson gets the first down. He was met by Leverance in the hole. Little note on John Leverance. He's been injured throughout his career, but he had one healthy year. And it was his sophomore season, and he was second to the Big Ten with 162 tackles. And an outstanding performer. And they expected great things from him, but he has been uh, pounded by injuries, including a damaging, a reconstructive knee surgery he underwent two years ago. He came back from that well and hurt the other knee earlier this year. And the knees, to get leverage, to get that pop, you have to have good knees as a linebacker. First down at the 19-yard line of Minnesota. Michigan on the drive. Callaway in motion. May have taken too much time. Taylor ran out of time on the play clock, and this will cost Michigan five yards. You don't expect that from Michael Taylor, a senior quarterback who makes very few mistakes. Only two interceptions this year. Only six Go in his career, game. Stan. Offense, first down. Only six in his career, and something like a better than 225 passing attempts, and that comes out to less than uh, three interceptions past interception ratio, less than three, around 2.70. Like you say, he doesn't make many mistakes at all. And he's in concert with Bo Schembechler. He and Bo are on the same page as to what they want to do offensively in most cases. Jared Bunch was nabbed on a nifty ankle grab by Anthony Bryant, a sophomore out of Miami of Florida, who's been in on a number of tackles here this afternoon. And if you recognize this defense, it's a stunt 4-3 that Michigan State uses. Watch coming from the backside. He comes all the way on the angle, on the loop. He's the man slanting, and he gets the pursuit angle down by the call of the defense. No gain on that play. Should be pointed out, Michigan went to this defense, not in the spring, but they went, or rather Minnesota went to this defense, not in the spring, but in the fall. So they're still learning this defense and getting better at it. Second and 15 for Michigan. Taylor to the air. McMurtry. Jackson will not let go, and Frank Jackson, the junior out of Detroit, makes the stop. It'll be third down coming up. Frank Jackson is shaken up on the play. 
gain of nine on that play. Third and about six coming up. What you try to do on a zone is find the open spot. Watch McMurtry go the inside, see a man, and then drift back out to the outside to the dead area and get yardage to give them a good or a better situation on third down to be able to make it. Now only third and six instead of third and long. Jackson was outstanding as a freshman, did not start last year. Was out with an illness uh, last week. Came into this game with three interceptions and 35 tackles, 23 solo stops. And lend some experience to that uh, Minnesota secondary. Looks like he'll be all right, a little bit shaken up on this play. Sean Lumpkin plays the other safety. There's Bo Schembechler. It's Michigan Wolverines. Even Bo says, hey, we do have a chance for the national title, but it's a slim one. We need some help. Well, if you remember, they'd be number one in the country right now, except for two kickoff returns by Rocket Ishmael. You got that right. Third down from the 15, third and six. Board in motion. Taylor, McMurtry, touchdown, Michigan. Penalty marker down in the offensive backfield. And the officials are calling him back. Holding against the Wolverines. And look at Bo. He cannot be happy. He knows this is a game that you can have a letdown. He's seen the offense, the defense give up a touchdown in the first drive. Now he sees mistakes by his offense. See if we can see the holding right there, the tackle from behind. See the flag come, got by him, and then try to tackle him from behind. Holding, offense, third down. Watch the quick slant by McMurtry. Between the two defenders, the timing of the pass is the key. You can see the pass right on target. A perfect zone pass by Taylor to McMurtry, but it's no good because of the holding. Now it is a third down for Michigan at 16 yards to go. Michigan went to trips to one side, left McMurtry back to the back side where there's only the corner and the linebacker shallow to cover him. Walker in the up position at tight end. Same formation. Board in motion. Taylor. To Horde, who is separated from the football on a big hit. Les O'Hara, junior out of Chicago's Lane Tech High School. And I mean he put a pop on the Michigan receiver. Well, third and 16 is a perfect situation for his own team. You drop back, you drop back, and then you make him throw short, and you come up and hit the man. That ball was thrown behind Horde and gave O'Hara enough room to come up and make the tackle. This will be about a 42-yard field goal attempt. J.D. Carlson is 12 of 12 overall. No good. His first miss of the season. He pulled it toward the near side. So the Minnesota defense has held. Let's take, let's take a listen to that hit on the play prior to the field goal attempt. Again, a zone defense. Watch everybody drop straight back. You can hear, hear it and feel it. <laughs> Even if you've never played the game. Well, that's a key, again, when you're playing zone, you get them in long yardage situations. You keep everybody close at the first down marker. You come up and make the big hits. First down for the Gophers. 25-yard line of Minnesota. Schaffner. He's got Tinglehoff. Gain of about 10 yards. Ada Murray made the stop of the near side with Eric Anderson. Let's go to the studio on Bob Carpenter. All right, Wayne, and down to the ACC. Duke is about to go 8-3 and three on the year. Dave Brown to Clarkston Hines, 12 yards. Hines' second touchdown catch of the day. And it's 24 to nothing. second quarter for the Devils. And right here, Minnesota leading Michigan 7-0. Second down and short yarded situation. Less than a yard to go. Gophers on the drive. Daryl Thompson. They had it stacked up pretty well. And let's see. I'm not sure he got to the first down. From where they're spotting the ball or from where the official is marking it, he may still be a little short. Mike Evans. J.J. Grant reacted very well for Michigan. It's going to be third down. 
Here's the hit we witnessed a couple of times a minute ago. Les O'Hara found the right situation to make that hit prior to the field goal attempt by J.D. Carlson. Third down. Third and inches situation. Gators in motion, double tight. They go to Cummings, the fullback, who tumbles for the first. Patrick Cummings, only his fourth carry of the season. J.J. Grant over to make the stop. You knew the linebackers were keying on Daryl Thompson in that deep eye formation. They were sitting back trying to time him coming to the line of scrimmage. And with the handoff to Cummings, it was so much quicker that they couldn't react up in time to stop him for the first down. Gators at the top of your screen, single off at the bottom. Shockner. Gators! First down at the Michigan 45. Rip Wilburn had the coverage, 18 yards on the pickup. Watch the linebackers in the Michigan zone. You know the secondary is playing deep, taking away the big play. They're caught up. They get caught up on the tight end. Gators comes right behind them and hits that, again, that dead zone. Another good pass by Scott Schaffner. Final 16 seconds coming up in this first period of play. Minnesota leading by the score of 7 0. We're in the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And they're going to let time wind down to end the first period of play. No, Bo Schembechler a bit concerned. His Wolverines off to a rocky start after one. I'm only going to say this once. The community has got behind the efforts to find Jacob Wetterling, who was abducted at gunpoint back on October 22nd of this year. And their efforts have uh, combined. There's uh, Jacob on the back of the uh, Minnesota helmet. Their efforts to publicize both the university here, the Minnesota Vikings, the Minnesota Timberwolves, everyone in the community getting behind the effort to find in Jacob Wetterling and the tragedy that it's been. And certainly our prayers are with them, and we hope that their success comes soon. First down now for the Gophers, 45-yard line, Michigan Territory. Just the start of the second period. Darrell Thompson for a yard. Mike Teeter in the middle made the hit. Well, they have a lot of different wrinkles to try to block Mike Teeter, but on the draw play, it ends up man-to-man -man with the center and the middle guard, and that time again, Mike Teeter won the battle. Second and nine coming up for the Gophers. Mick Tinglehoff, number 86, brings in the play from the sideline. Scott Schaffner, sophomore from Westchester. Schaffner on the roll. He'll take it himself. And he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Evans made the stop. Take a look at the storyline story line thus far. Schaffner did much of his damage through the air on the opening drive. Minnesota scored on its first drive of the game. Carlson hooked a 42-yard field goal. And look at that yardage di differential thus far. I mean, Bo Schambuckler has to be saying, this is trouble for me. You know, this is the letdown week everybody's talking about. Right away, Minnesota goes down and scores. We get a touchdown call back. We missed our first field goal of the year. We get a delay of the game. Does not look good. Second to make it third and eight. Schaffner tried to thread the needle and pass interference will be called on Beta Murray. Beta Murray reaching over the back of the intended receiver. When you are going badly defensively as a team, you try to blitz. Here's a blitz and Teeter coming around because of the blitz, man-to-man -man blocking. The stunt game works, but it's all for naught as Beta Murray got caught with his hand around the receiver. First down for the Gophers. There it is again. We can't really see. See the left arm as we go back. It's the left arm that the pass interference is called. You do that defensively because you're afraid if you miss the ball, he'll catch it and run for a touchdown. It's almost a subconscious move defensively. You have to, you have to train yourself not to do it. So that if you don't knock down the pass, you've still got a piece of the runner. Now first and 10 of the 35 of Michigan. Thompson following a block by Cummings. There's a penalty mark 
Tucker down. It might be for holding or illegal use of hands. And Thompson is inside the 35 to about the 33. Bobby Abrams, the outside linebacker. Trip Welburn supporting from the safety position. Alex Marshall, number 59, has been complaining several times to the official about being held by the tight end Shane Strain. You do that as an outside linebacker to draw the official's eyes, attention to you. So later in the game, you're going to get held a certain number of times that he's watching that, and he'll call it for you. J.J. Grant getting the definitive from the official, Chuck Everling. Offensive holding. There's the penalty situation thus far. Make that Jerry Hendrickson. I said Chuck Heberling. I was thinking of somebody else. Old NFL <laughs> official Chuck Old Heberling. NFL official. That's exactly exactly right. is what I was thinking of. Now first down for Minnesota. First and 20. The football back to the 45 of Michigan. Yeah, you looked at me kind of funny. Did he call a couple of fouls on you in your time? <laughs> One thing they like to do is get to the ball. Daryl Thompson on screens. But really they take him out of the game on this play. Schaffner looks it over. The shovel pass and nothing there for Rick Meyer. They nabbed him in his tracks. Chris Hutchinson. Elsewhere around the country. Michigan trailing here 7-0 to Minnesota. Mm. Michigan State trailing Northwestern. Wildcats in the early going looking for their first win of the season. Iowa still trying to keep some postseason hopes alive. Leading Purdue and Colorado over Kansas State. Golden Buffaloes closing in on the orange. Darian Hagan trying to become the fifth quarterback in history to gain a thousand yards both on the ground and in the air in the same season. Schaffner, eight of nine, 84 yards. Second and long, Schaffner under duress. He was being yanked down from behind by Mike Evans. Michigan's defensive front wall is now really beginning to control the line of scrimmage. Let's watch Mike Evans coming from the outside. Goes right around the tackle, John Melander. Watch him get a hold of the back of the neck almost there to the shoulder pads. He has him, almost rips him down. Defensively, you're just grabbing for anything you get. Sometimes you end up with a face mask inadvertently. That time he got lucky and got a hold of the back of the shoulder pads and drug him down. Third down and 20 now for Minnesota. There's Alex Marshall and Mike Evans. Schaffner. By Hutchinson. Schaffner can run, but not that far against the Michigan defense. He needed 20, and he probably got about eight yards. J.J. Grant chased him out of the far side in front of Bo Schembechler and the Wolverine bench. Key block that time by Marcus Evans on Chris Hutchinson, the defensive end. Got him down, allowed Schaffner to get around the corner and get some yardage back. I still think it's too long for a field goal attempt. Brent Herbel comes on. Herbel. Averaging 37 yards a kick. He's a senior from Grafton, North Dakota. He has that one punt block this year, Wayne. Trip Welburn back deep. High snap. Herbal stays with it. It's away a nice kick. Fair catch signal made. And the catch completed by Welburn near the Michigan 12-yard line. 12.47 to go. First half of play. Minnesota scored first, and they still lead. Football Saturday, Michigan at Minnesota is brought to you by Jaguar, a blending of art and machine. By Gillette and the Gillette Atra Plus Shaving System and Gillette Foamy, together the best a man can get. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Wayne, it's bad enough when you do something bad defensively, but when your coach gets run over because of what you have done, we see the quarterback, Scott Schaffner, run over one of Michigan's defensive, I think that's Lloyd Carr, as he's yelling at number 97, Chris Hutchinson, for allowing him to get outside. Michigan on first down, and Leroy Horde out to about the 15-yard line. Makes it worse when your mistake means your coach gets run over. Ron Getz made the stop on the play, gain of about three yards, second and seven coming up for Michigan. Yeah, I mean, when you get the coach, it's one thing to allow the quarterback to get hit. When you get the coach in trouble. He's probably starting to yell, and then he's going to yell even louder when he gets mad. <laughs> Second and seven. Walker in motion. Off the play action to Horn. Taylor got his man out near the 
30 McMurtry and he paid for it because he was sandwiched at the 30 yard line and Derek Fisher the undercut move 15 yard gain to a first down there's Tony Bowles injured on uh, what Michigan's first or second drive of the ball game and uh, we are told he has a bruised knee and twisted well I guess I, now I'm told it's a twisted right knee and he'll be reevaluated at halftime so there's a chance he could play later today. I would doubt it with the I, backs they from have. the looks of it I can't imagine and again you mentioned the talent that's there on first down Jared Bunch for about seven yards. Tony Bowles is the type that if he played for a team that really showcased him would be a Heisman yeah. Trophy candidate himself but he's not used that much he's only had 130 carries going into today's football game 882 822 yards at a 6.3 average he has scored now 10 touchdowns but you've got Leroy Horde who's on this team and Jared Bunch and, and they also can play a feature back role if needed plus Michigan has never been a star system organization set up the slot to the bottom of your screen and a bit of a delay Horde gets by one defender but has nowhere to the yard. I'll tell you, the guy that made that play was Mike Sunbold. There's our story. Michigan coming up at a third down. Let's go to the studio. All right, Wayne, and down to the SEC, number 11, Auburn at Georgia. They've won 10 of the last 14 there. Reggie Slack to Greg Taylor, 24 yards, and the Tigers are rolling toward 5-1 in the SEC. All right, Bob Carpenter, Auburn continues its smooth in the Southeast Conference. They're coming up on a game with Alabama, aren't they? Third down. Taylor. Callaway wide open in the seam of the deep zone, and he's got a first down to the 48-yard line of Minnesota. 15-yard pickup, Frank Jackson and Fred Foggy on the stop. Again, as a linebacker, you have to find people in zones. Ron Getz just cannot find Callaway. He's looking for him all over, finally. The strong safety comes over Frank Jackson to try to help. But Ron Getz was running around and could not find it. We can see him right there. There's Getz up too tight. Callaway deeper and behind him in the right area. He got to find him. First down now for Michigan in Gopher territory. Leroy Ford. Good pursuit by that Minnesota defense. Frank Jackson out in front of the play to cut him down. And he had help coming from Leverance in the linebacking core. Ford five carries, 10 yards. Good play by Frank Jackson. He came up and not only forced it back inside, but he squeezed it down tight enough so when uh, the back made the cut, Leroy Horde, he couldn't get through the gap. Second down at 11 for Michigan. Michigan Wolverines with the big play are back to within one and J.D. Carlson can tie the game. John Gutekus again yesterday told us they expected Greg McMurtry to go upstairs to go deep early in the football game. He thought it'd be the first or second series but here it is when they need it most to get some momentum back. Carlson for the point after. He's 26 of 28 in PATs. And he ties the ball game with 9.24 to go. On a zone, you have to play your deep third. Even though they throw curl after curl in front of you, you've got to stay deep. But Freddie Foggy, a freshman, forgets. As you can see, number four chasing right here. That ball was hung up in the air. McMurtry was five yards behind Freddie Foggy and had to wait for the football. First half of play, Michigan has caught Minnesota. Wayne Larrabee, Stan White, that's our story. Second period of play. 88 yards, seven plays on the Michigan touchdown drive to catch Minnesota. Taylor, three of three on the drive. There's a McMurtry and a look at the scoring drive. 49-yard touchdown reception. Michigan is a whole lot more than three yards in a cloud of dust, aren't they? J.D. Carlson getting set to restart the game. 
Peters back deep. And from the three. Peters almost had a seam. He was tripped up on the play. You can make a mistake, Wayne, but the one area you can't make a mistake is in the defensive backfield. Here's Freddie Foggy, number four, thinking he has help deep. But he realizes too late the safety is not coming over. And he's trying to chase down McMurtry and forget it. He's not able to do it even though the ball hangs. It's a touchdown for Michigan. If you make a mistake in the secondary, it means seven points. And look at the quarterback. Yep. Got another one down there. Michael Taylor. The seventh touchdown pass of the season against just two interceptions. Darrell Thompson on first down out to the 30-yard line. He runs hard. And the note on the Minnesota crown game is that they have lost only two fumbles. And an even bigger note is that they've had only four fumbles at this point of the season, right? Isn't it? They've lost two and they've had four. Yeah, that, amazing. That, that is a really amazing statistic. Uh, uh, you just have to, you think they have more fumbled snaps yeah, than that during the year. But they've been able to hold on to that football, and that's why they've been able to stay in every football game except the Nebraska game. Where they were beaten 48 to nothing. Second down. It's about five yards to go. Darrell Thompson. This time, not much there as they ran at the heart of the Michigan defensive line. Abrams in from the linebacking core. T.J. Osmond on the defensive line is also there. We're going to go 368. You get it up. Go red up 368. Get it up to him. You got to go up and rebound him. That guy won't back up. Right, right, right. right. He doesn't back up. He gets screwed up. They're talking when the motions and all those things start. Okay. Michigan huddle on the sidelines. There's Bo Beckler. Markel Fleetwood is in the ball game for Minnesota. At quarterback on third down. Third and about three. Fleetwood to Gators. And he's met by Todd Plate, but has picked up a first down near the 38-yard line. Markel Fleetwood, a freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. Redshirt freshman. Option type of quarterback. Uh, had an outstanding spring practice, but they feel he's more than an option quarterback. He has a strong arm. They'll do a little sprint out with him, but they won't change the offense drastically to suit his talents. They'll just add a little dimension to that offense. You saw the stronger arm there. That ball was rifled out in the flat, got there in a hurry. Gators in motion on first down for the Gophers. Thompson. For about two. Other scores around college football today. Michigan State has caught Northwestern. Michigan State heading toward a bowl game. Georgia Tech are only get up on Wake Forest out of the ACC. There's Virginia Tech trailing North Carolina State. Texas has the early lead on TCU in the Southwest. We saw and right here. And yeah, we saw Gary Miller, Gary Moeller, excuse me, the offensive coordinator, talking on the Michigan sideline. Again, they're going to throw the deep pass. He said, go up and get it like a rebound. Thompson, 14 carries, 34 tough yards, and a touchdown. Tinglehoff in motion. Fleetwood. And he got about two yards out of that. Alex Marshall, J.J. Grant stayed home and made the play. Third down coming up for the Gophers. Here's the defensive line of Michigan. You see here's the block on the outside linebacker Alex Marshall number 59 see him use his hands he used his hands to get get rid of two blockers and forces Markel Fleetwood back to the inside that's an excellent play by the outside linebacker you have to use your hands to ward off blockers hold your position that's a perfect execution third down and seven Minnesota five of seven on third down conversions Fleetwood under pressure did he get it away in time? Incomplete pass is what they'll rule. It's fourth down for Minnesota. I'll tell you what, the Wolverines were raining in on that play. Alex Marshall, T.J. Osmond were all over the quarterback. Darrell Thompson stayed in and had to do some blocking on that play. You wonder why they put in Markel Fleetwood at that point, because Scott Schaffner has been having an excellent uh, first half, but he wanted to get him in the game early just to give a change up in the things they're doing offensively. I fully expect uh, to see Schaffner again today. Of a high snap again to Herbal. That's his punt away. Welburn backing up from the 11. Out to the 41 yard line. About a 30 yard return. Leverens on the far side made the stop. 5.57 to go in the first half. We'll be back. 
It's Wayne Larravee, Stan White. That's the story with 5.57 to go this first half of play. Minnesota's played it tough to this point. Michigan beginning to grip control, though, with the line of scrimmage, and you can feel it. They scored on their last drive. 49-yard touchdown pass, Taylor to McMurtry, and now Michigan back out again. From the 41 in Wolverine territory. That's Callaway at the bottom of your screen. There's a good look at Michael Taylor. Bunch is the fullback for the tailback in place of the injured Tony Bowles. Leroy Horn! Boy, he was like a locomotive with a load of coal out to the 50-yard line. Gain of nine. Leverins, the linebacker, made the stop. Anthony Bryant not equal to that task as he hit him in the hole. Coming up later today on ESPN, Virginia with a win of this game will clinch the ACC title. And Bennett down there to join Tim Brando on that game. And Ron Franklin and company will have 15 ranked Clemson against South Carolina. Two in-state rivals. The only two what? Division 1A schools in South Carolina doing better. Taylor, McMurtry. He stepped out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Minnesota where he's got a first down. Lohler forced him out of the near side. Murtry reminds you a little bit of Anthony Carter, the great wide receiver for Michigan that wore number one. Got the speed to go deep. See how far off he is? Eight yards. That's what's happened once you get beat deep. You start getting back deeper and deeper. That time, Morris Lohler just too deep on Greg McMurtry. That's giving you yardage. Four catches, 85 yards for McMurtry and a touchdown. 38-yard line in Gopher territory. Michigan going first and 10. Four. Good cutback. Close to the first down at the 29-yard line on a gain of nine. Max Steven, the linebacker, and Ron Getz helping out. Team up on the stop. One thing about Minnesota... They play hard, but they have trouble sustaining it. They get wore down. They don't have that number of people. See, Michigan just keeps coming at you and coming at you. When that happens, they start knocking you further and further off the ball. You can see the momentum changing on runs like that. When they can just push you back on a straight handoff, you know that the whole ebb and tide is flowing. Taylor's completed his last four. Callaway in motion. Broken up, and I'll tell you, on the angle, Morris Lohler, if he had gotten there a fraction of a second sooner, would have had a pick and might have been gone down the sidelines. Wasn't scared by the speed this time. You see him closing, no shoulders turned. Gets his hand on the football, and you're right, Wayne, a half a step away. In fact, the ball laid on his back for a second. <laughs> really, McMurtry could have picked it McMurtry up off his back and ran. <laughs> almost picked it up and went. Third down now, about a yard and a half to go to that first down. There's Morris Lohler. Says free safety, but he plays both free safety and corner, and right now he's in for Freddie Foggy, who made the mistake on McMurtry earlier for the touchdown. Michigan to the wish throw. <laughs> Penalty markers down. Someone violated the neutral zone. Now again, Wayne, you think of Michigan as the pounded out the old three yards in a cloud of dust, but they're throwing the ball quite a bit. They're using a lot of different formations. Illegal procedure against Michigan. Yeah, we were asking, talking to the uh, coaches from Minnesota. Dead ball foul. Procedure, third down. And the misconception by a layman would be that, well, Michigan is a simple, uh, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust, but they do so much offensively. There's, you can see the movement all over the Michigan line. Left guard. Number 78, Dean Dingman, jump back. That's a movement you cannot make once you get set. Both offensively and defensively, Michigan will throw a lot at you. You have a full week of preparation when you get set to play the Wolverines. Not a simple deal. Well, Bo has changed as the game has changed. He was a conservative coach. It didn't do a lot of things, but as the game has changed, he has changed. Now it's a third down off the penalty. Third and six. Walker in motion. Taylor. That's a result of good pass blocking. 
you can allow this long and allow McMurtry to run all the way across the field. See the crossing pattern? He runs through the zones, finds the, the little area, the little seam in the zones, and just keeps running. He started on one side, he ended up completely on the other side to score. Here it is from the ground. Look at that. It just sets in there. That's almost like practice. No pass rush, no pass coverage. Ends up a touchdown. J.D. Carlson for the point after. And the Michigan Wolverines with a couple of second period touchdowns. A couple of explosive second period touchdowns. One of 49, one of 34 yards. Both to McMurtry with five catches, 119 yards and two touchdowns. And Michigan leads it. Watch how much time Greg McMurtry with his speed has on this play. He's able to run all the way across the field. Has he touched anywhere? Runs right by the linebacker. You got to jam a guy with speed. Look how long this takes. He's just floating across the middle between the linebackers, and then nobody converges on him. Where's the corner? All the way to the middle of the field? They didn't stay in their area. They didn't have a pass rush. You can't play zone defense if you don't play discipline with discipline and get some pressure on the quarterback. Bo Beckler has a drink on that one. And McMurtry, what a day he's had already. 119 yards at a pair of scores. Tell you what, these uh, Michigan receivers, people were talking about, if you put them in John Makovic's offense down at Illinois, they'd have even bigger numbers. Or how about what uh, what they're doing at Northwestern in that offense, the pass offense they have there? These are two fine receivers who don't get an awful lot of attention around the country. Mercury Callaway. This is Gators, another fine receiver in the Big Ten from Minnesota. Gators out close to the 20-yard line. Gators came in. Averaging 19 yards per kickoff return. Chris Bond made the stop on that return. Out to the 20-yard line of the Gophers to start this drive. There's Coach Gutekunz. Took over for Lou Holtz here. And has gone through a couple of rebuilding years in Minnesota. Schaffner back into the lineup now for the Gophers at quarterback. Replacing Markel Fleetwood, who engineered the last uh, sequence of drives. Schaffner had success early in the game in the air. And this time it's an incomplete pass. I'm not, are they going to rule? Yes, they're going to rule a sack. Apparently his knee was down before he got rid of the football. Mike Evans arrived at the scene along with Mike Teeter. Let's watch it from the base. Again, the momentum has changed. They're collapsing the offensive line. Watch them just push people back. That time, number 92, Mike Evans again. And the question was whether that was a fumble or whether it was a sack. And it really worked out for Minnesota that it was a sack and not a fumble. The officials, the point of emphasis is if there's any question, it's a pass. If there's any question at all. Second down and long yardage now, 21 yards to go. Thompson finding some room out across the 20 to the 21-yard line. He got about 12 yards out of that. Alex Marshall made the stop. Daryl Thompson out of Rochester, Minnesota, John Marshall High School. Powerful runner with speed. Pretty good receiver, although he hasn't caught many balls. He hasn't asked to catch many footballs in the style of offense they run. He's the feature guy carrying the football, not the receiver. Minnesota needs a first down right here with uh, a little less than three minutes left in this first half. Michigan has been able to move the ball at will the last couple times they've had the ball. They need to keep the possession of the football. Third and nine. Schaffner. Penalty markers down. And down goes Schaffner. Back inside the 20 near the 17-yard line. It's a loss of about four. Evans and Hutchinson on the stop. Holding the call against Minnesota. They will decline that. They've already gotten a sack. Watch it from the backside now. Watch the people just come in. There's one double team and the rest single team. Watch how they collapse from the outside. Again, not real bad blocking, but nobody open downfield. And you see Michigan, they just keep coming, keep coming. In waves, huh? Discipline. Crack down, Herbal. they get up. Herbal averaging 37 yards today. Welburn back deep for Michigan. High snap once again. That's the third time he's had to handle a high snap. Welburn. Yep. Inside Minnesota territory. Michigan will start the drive near the 43-yard line. 
First and ten, Jason Brower made the stop. Michigan is coming after the punt, trying to block it with a high snap. Good blocking, though, for, on the special teams. You see, watch the, the flip of number 49 for Michigan. Chris Bone. Michigan scored on its last possession, and they lead it by the score of 14 to 7. There's a look at the scoring summary. Taylor going back to the air. Going deep from Nick Murtry. Broken up and a penalty marker down. Morris Lohler had the coverage on McMurtry, who had two or three steps at one point in that play on the coverage. Penalty marker down. Again, Morris Lohler is a free safety. But they moved him out to the corner. Now, this is a 15-yard penalty. It's not at the point of the ball like it would be in the NFL, but 15 yards from the previous line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, McMurtry's just running by people out there, isn't he? Well, you get frustrated. you got to be patient. We talk about be disciplined in a zone. Defensive pass interference. First down. But he's up too tight to begin with, and he wants the back pedal to hook and go. You see him bite on the hook. You cannot bite on a hook, and then when you have deep third in the zone, he's beat deep. Now all he can do is gamble that he can put his hand up at the time the ball comes. And Mercury almost makes the catch anyhow. Off the penalty, first down from the 28-yard line. Howard in motion. Ford. A play we've seen Tony Bowles make. Leroy Horde getting that step into the clear and showing the kind of speed he has. Bowles a little happier now that they've turned it around momentum wise. They, they were able to dig down and just up it a notch when they needed it. A lot of teams can't do that on the day of the game when they aren't completely ready. Michigan's able to do that today. Carlson for the point after. And the Michigan Wolverines extend their lead to 21 to 7. Watch it again. It's a power play off tackle. Watch the guard leading through. He just turns and seals off the backside. But again, a bad angle by number 26, Sean Lumpkin. He has to come up and make that play. The defensive backs have been killing Minnesota today. And Michigan's exploded into the lead. The spectacle. The sight. The sound. The fall colors are spectacular on ESPN's college football. Two teams with big appetites for bowl bids battle on Thanksgiving night. West Virginia faces Syracuse Thursday at 8 Eastern live on ESPN. Wayne Larrabee and Stan White were at the Metrodome. Leroy Horde, the latest man of the hour for Michigan, on a 29-yard touchdown burst to propel Bo Schembechler and the Wolverines into command here late in the first half. 2.06 to go, first half of play. Take a look at what happened in the first quarter and now in the second period. Wow. Talk about turnaround. Michigan, three touchdowns in seven minutes and 18 seconds. A little extra on the sideline, I'll guarantee you, on that Michigan side, that's the way the game began. Carlson's kick backing up Gators into the end zone, and he downs it. Let's take a look at the last Michigan touchdown. Again, taking a look at it from ground level. 370 pounds, double team blocking, a kick out by Jared Bunch, and a missed tackle again by number 18, and by number 26, the two defensive backs, Morris Lohler, and Sean Lumpkin, as we're talking about, you play zone, your defensive backs are the last line of defense. They got to stop the fit long passes. They got to come up and make the tackles. And Minnesota has not been doing the job. First down now. Fleetwood back in at quarterback for Minnesota. And Fleetwood looks to the air. Tinglehawk for a first down out near 
the 38 yard line David Key made the play on the near side is that Minnesota's first in the second period of play I believe it is 19 yard game again this is a throw that Markel Fleetwood can make it's a long throw all the way across the field see how deep this out is it's about a 20 yard out and he's throwing it across the field you're talking about a 40 45 yard pass and Tinglehoff on the reception First down for the Gophers at their 38. Fleetwood. Dropped down the play by Veda Murray. Almost had the pick and the pass intended for Steve Ram, who as he hit the ground may have uh, jammed an elbow. He stuck his hand in there too. I think he may have hurt his arm when he stuck it in to break up the pass. Veda Murray was just baiting him. He's just baiting him. And watch Veda Murray come in from the left hand side of your screen what's the arm stick in there right there oh there it is yeah now watch him grab his yep. arm he hit the foot you know it could be a hyperextended elbow as you hit that arm and you get your arm bent backwards the elbow bends the wrong direction that's, that's when he injured it and no question about that Let's take Let's one take more look at it Wayne we'll see as he sticks his arm out Steve. See, watch the elbow right there which way does it bend did it get drugged to the backside? Get right on that elbow. Mm. Steve Rim, a freshman out of Ocala, Florida. They're very high on him. He's a came to the school as a wide receiver. They used him at running back. Matter of fact, he's carried the ball 16 times from scrimmage, averaging 7.6 yards per carry. But he's going to be a wide receiver from what they tell us in this program in the future, and they're very high on him. Coming up at halftime, Bob Carpenter, Bino Cook, Lee Corso. Update you on all that's happening in college football today. A little bit of history on the little brown jug. And scores and highlights as well. Michigan leading 21 to 7 as you see Steve Rem getting worked over by the trainers. Michigan has been in command since really late in the first period of play. Stan, you can see they began to grip control of the game at the line of scrimmage. And they have dominated since, although these last couple of pass plays, Fleetwood has had time to throw. It looks like he's holding his wrist. Yeah, he may have got it right on the wrist. It could have had that foot kick it on the elbow on the wrist somewhere in that general area. Fleetwood. Thompson. Hit from behind initially by T.J. Osmond, and he slowed him down. J.J. Grant cleaned up. Gain of a few yards of the play. We'll leave about a third and seven or six yards to go. I don't know if I'd be calling timeouts if I was Minnesota. Minute 43 left. You still have time to move down the field without using your timeouts offensively. But this is third down. They don't make the first down. They're going to have to punt. Michigan's going to get the ball back again with well over a minute left. Coming up tomorrow, NFL game day. And NFL primetime of the shows the pros would be watching if they weren't busy on Sundays. The Emmy Award winning NFL game day. A full hour of information on what to look for and why. Later, NFL primetime. All the key plays from every game played that day with complete analysis from Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Pete Exelm, and John Saunders. For the first and last words of the day's action, watch NFL game day and NFL primetime. And the game coming up tomorrow night, the New York Jets take on the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts trying to get back into contention for the AFC East race and Eric Dickerson's been injury riddled over this season and if he can round into form maybe the Colts can make a late run maybe two coaches on the hot seat there yes sir <laughs> that's all coming up tomorrow here on ESPN Fleetwood in the ball game on this particular drive they're going to shuffle quarterbacks back and forth and Schaffner staying warm in the bullpen, so to speak, because he knows he'll be back into the game soon. Third down for Minnesota, six yards to go. 42-yard line of the Gophers. Cummings in motion. Fleetwood drills it in to Shane Strain, who makes a diving grab of the Michigan 49. Anderson and Grant were there for the Wolverines. Nine-yard pickup and a first down. They reset the change and a minute 38 left to go as you see in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Fleetwood to the sidelines and Tinglehoff the intended receiver. Abrams had the coverage on the near side. 
second down. That stops the clock with a minute 31 remaining in the first half. Michigan leading 21 to 7. There's Steve Ramoth. Bruised upper arm, we're told. He's going in for x rays. That's a lot of tape and bandage. Isn't it? <laughs> Immobilizing the arm and the rest of the upper body, too. Right. Second and ten. Minnesota has two timeouts remaining. That's Tingle off in motion. Fleetwood off play action. Gets by White. Gets it away to Gators. For a gain of about seven yards. Now they're going to roll it incomplete. On the far side. Gators the intended target. I thought Fleetwood might have been able to get that one in there. I'll tell you what. He was under great pressure from uh, Brent White. Let's see if we can pick it up. Does get free, and then Marshall just can't grab him before he throws the football. See the ball hit the ground. It was incomplete before Gators could uh, put it into his body. But that's the extra dimension now that Fleetwood adds to the offense. He's able to run out, able to have that ability to escape some defenders and still get the pass off. Third and ten. Fleetwood three of seven, 42 yards. Screen. Thompson and nearly picked away by Anderson. Penalty marker down. I would guess for a hold. Either that or perhaps an illegal man downfield on a screen play like that. Holding the call against Minnesota. Eric Anderson almost had a shot at the football. As that pass was a bit overthrown, a ten for Daryl Thompson. See if we can see the hold on the outside. Right there is the tackle. You see on the outside, try to get his hands down. The ball is overthrown. And watch Anderson just can't quite. Yeah, he knows if he's able to pick that off and stay on his feet, he's got nothing but green in front of him. Of course, any any pickoff would have been a good situation for Michigan. Brent Herbel on one formation on fourth down and ten from the 49 of Michigan. Better snap this time. Well, Vernon, penalty marker is down. Well, Vernon nabbed right away by Skeeter Akri. 33-yard punt, four-yard return. Well, it may have been interference with the ability to make a catch. There's a two-yard two ring yeah. that you draw around the receiver. And if you violate that two-yard ring, that's a uh, penalty. The officials are conferring about that right now. Against Minnesota is the call. They were too close on the catch attempt, so five it's a five-yard yard penalty. Interference penalty, first down. If you just go into the ring, it's five yards. If you go into the ring and make contact, it's 15 yards. See if he's close enough. Is he within two yards? Oh, yes. Yeah, I think he's within two yards when he's making that catch. That's whether he calls a fair catch or not. Exactly. You cannot go inside a two-yard ring around the receiver. So Michigan on a first down. The Wolverines just short of their 25. Ford, and he's got some running room. To the 45-50, and out of bounds at the Minnesota 47-yard line. Sean Lumpkin and Frank Jackson. Lumpkin chased him out. Jackson had a shot at him early, but could not make the play. Well, I think they've taken away some of the fire in this Minnesota defense. You see, they're just rolling over people, doubling leverance, number 56. And watch 45, he didn't want any part of this, right there. That's not a try to make a tackle. <laughs> you can't sit back and just let people run over you. They'll 29, do it all day. 29-yard pickup by Hort. He has 86 yards on nine carries. Bunch the long setback, Michigan on first down. Taylor, Callaway wide open. To the 25-yard line of Minnesota, 22 yards on the gain, and Lumpkin arrived on the scene along with Morris Lohler. They're going downfield like there's no defense there, like it's a two-minute drill in practice. That was so wide open, I don't know what they were playing defensively, what their uh, zone was, because there were no zones there. Now they're yelling at each other, they don't know what side to line up on. And Michigan calls for a timeout here. Michael Taylor not sure of the play call. The Wolverines will talk it over. 52 seconds to go as Taylor heads over to Bow. 
you know, Wayne, we probably won't see Tony Bowles again today. But I think it fits in. They got so many weapons, and uh, a lot of people have said Bo Schembechler is almost proud of the fact that they've never had a Heisman Trophy winner because his concept is team, team, team. No question about that. And they've had great players that have gone through that program. And coming up, of course, college basketball is underway now, and the Dodge NIT is in full swing. On Wednesday, we'll bring you the semifinal doubleheader here on ESPN. DePaul, Kansas, and UNLV are all in the semis. Houston and St. John's play tonight. And obviously, that will complete the bracket for you. Houston, St. John's, the winner of that game takes on UNLV. And of course, we will also have the championship game of the Dodge NIT basketball tournament coming up here on Friday on ESPN. Take a look at the last reception that moved Michigan into scoring territory Michael Taylor plenty of time back there his own defense but you can tell me who's close to Callaway on this play you see anybody close to him and those guys are five and ten yards away they're closing in they can't even get there I mean you have to be within the area you're breaking on the ball you should be making contact as the ball gets there Michigan had 57 yards of offense in the first period 232 in this quarter Taylor on first down for the 25 His third of the day, and he beat Lumpkin to the corner. To the pylon on the near side. You go to the post, you go inside move, inside move, and you break inside, he looks away and comes back to the outside, the post corner. Nice throw right in the corner, gets one foot over the line. McMurtry's just eating him up. Now watch him break to the inside. They're double teamed him here. One man jamming him, he breaks in, gives a head fake to the out. That's just poor defensive coverage. The move was not even that great. McMurtry, six catches, 144 yards. Yeah, but it was good enough, right? <laughs> well, they're afraid of it. They're backed off. Carlson for the point after. And he's got it. Michigan's done all its scoring here in the second period. Now watch the star of the game once again. Well, they've doubled up. They went to it too deep. Had them forced way inside. Now watch that. You see, he just does not make the break. He's too far away. You have to anticipate in a zone, especially down here. You can't be playing in the end zone. They're so afraid of Greg McMurtry right now that they're backed off, and it, that even makes it worse. You might as well go down and challenge him and make him beat you with his straight ability rather than lay off and just give him things. 45 seconds left to go. First half, it is 28-7. to 7. Michigan over Minnesota. Bo Schembechler, was there a letdown coming off the big win over Illinois a week ago? Well... Maybe for all of 15 minutes, <laughs> first period. Thompson, a one-yard touchdown run for Minnesota. Put the Gophers on the board, first drive of the game. Michigan did not score until the second period of play, and there is the latest scoring drive. 76 yards and three plays. They scored all four touchdowns in this period. Gators across the five. Out to the 22-yard line. Ryan Townsend made the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. Michigan has scored four times in the last eight minutes and 39 seconds of this game. Well, I mentioned the last time they had the ball, they shouldn't be calling timeouts because if they give the ball to Michigan, the way <laughs> they've been running up and down the field, they can get on the board. Well, they better run the ball now with, <laughs> with 41 <laughs> seconds left and not give it to them again because they're scoring in a matter of seconds each time they get the ball. Markel Fleetwood running the offense on this drive for Minnesota. Got a screen. slot set up to the top of the screen and under pressure, nowhere to go. Fleetwood goes down. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a half yard. Sylvester Stanley over to make the stop for Michigan. Time winding down in this first half of play. It's been an impressive second period. The power of Michigan has been felt by all here in the Metrodome. Fleetwood, Tinglehoff just short of the first down in the final 16 seconds. Welburn had the coverage on the far side. Again, Michigan's going to let you pick on that little short route all day. Time winding down to this first half of play. I'm not sure they're going to get another snap off. They do just in time. Fleetwood going over the middle and through the hands of Cummings. The final play of what for Minnesota has been a nightmarish second period of play. Michigan heading to the Rose Bowl. Maybe they have the lead here at the end of one half of play. Let's go to the studio and Bob Carpenter.
All right, Wayne, thank you very much. And at halftime in Minneapolis, the story is Greg McMurtry with three long touchdown catches, and the Wolverines are rolling toward the Rose Bowl on the road this afternoon. Welcome to our College Football Saturday Halftime Report. For Michigan today is not only number one of the program, number one on the stat sheet, number one on the field. Greg McMurtry's been outstanding today, the wide receiver for Michigan. Three TD catches. Three touchdown catches, and they're just afraid of him. Watch this one. This is a busted coverage. He just jogs down the field. The ball's thrown up. And we've seen the defensive backfield of Minnesota make mistake after mistake all day. This is the first one. Here's the second one. This one is a, see there, don't even know where to line up. They're running across the field. They're not sure where they're supposed to go. No pass uh, rush. He just runs through the seams and down the field for the touchdown. Real confusion in the secondary. And this one here, look at the hook and go right here. Stop and go. No, this, excuse me, this is the out, and the, the, the post corner down in and then out. The hook and go wasn't a touchdown, but it made long yardage. This time in the corner of the end zone. Lest I forget, three touchdowns, Wayne. He had one called back in the first quarter. He did, and uh, he ties Ron Kramer for most touchdowns scored through the air by a wide receiver uh, for Michigan in a single game. And, of course, Kramer was a great tight end for Michigan. But uh, what an outstanding afternoon. Take a look at the statistics now. Most of the Michigan yardage coming in the second period of play. 256 yards for Michigan in the second quarter alone. You saw they had a slow start. I'm sure Bo was upset because he was afraid of, uh, of a letdown between the Illinois and Ohio State game. But he took them to task on the sideline. And to Michigan's credit, they were able to pick it up a notch. They were able to start substituting people in. They started saying, if you're not going to play, Somebody else will take it, your job and, and go with it. And they really got him flowing, got him going, and now they just haven't been able to stop him even come close to stop him. And as you said, he did make some changes. Teeter came out for a series and uh, eventually, of course, went back in. But, I mean, he did make a few adjustments, and that seemed to drive the message home. And by late in the first period of play, you could tell Michigan was asserting itself on the offensive and defensive lines, and they had a whale of a second period of play. Minnesota kicking to Michigan to restart the ball game as we get set for the third period. Michigan leading 20. To seven. That's Aaron Pipecorn, a Naval ROTC scholarship student. His major is aerospace engineering. They're the twin safeties back deep for the Michigan Wolverines. Desmond Howard. Out to about the 22-yard line. Not much more than that. Joel Stats led the way, along with uh, Pat Tinglehoff on the tackle. Take a look at the uh, possession chart for the ball game here this afternoon. This is the first half now. Michigan, their opening drive went just eight yards to a punt. 34 yards on their second, and then boom, 88 yards, 59 yards. They march to the end zone from 44 away, and then 75 yards to break the game wide open, all of which came in the second period of play. Tony Bowles injured on the second offensive possession for Michigan here today. Suffered a twisted knee, will not return. Leroy Ward cutting it back. Eddie Miles made the stop. Ford like Bowles. Stan White runs with so much power and speed, and Ford has been shaken up on this play. Ford, 93 yards at 11 carries and a touchdown. That'd be talk about losing your running backs, and they have a lot of them in Michigan, but you cannot afford to lose Tony Bowles and Leroy Ward for the long run. I don't think it will be critical with this game, the way things are going. But for the long run, it sure would be. It looks like they may just got the wind knocked out of him here. There was a clamor of pads as he made the cutback. Nice cutback. Let's see where he gets hit. Is it right in the midsection right there and right there? Yeah, it looks to me like he just got the wind knocked out of him, which hurts a lot. Mm. I mean, it's very painful. You can see him right there arching his back. You get that wind knocked out of you. It's uh, painful for a while. For, but, a, uh, for a fleeting second, it feels like you're going to die. Yeah, it feels <laughs> like you'll never breathe again. And, uh, of course, also making that tackle, as I said, Eddie Miles. And he seemed to come out gingerly holding his arm. And he's on the sidelines now. Miles, uh, left end, senior out of Miami, Florida. Other games coming up today here on ESPN. Virginia against Maryland with a win in this game. Well, Virginia will clinch the ACC title. And then, of course, it'll be Clemson and South Carolina, two in-state rivals doing battle in that one, and that's always a war. Virginia in its 101st year, Wayne. They've never won 10 games in the season. This would be the 10th game for 
second down now at about three yards to go. Callaway, the man in motion. Jared Bunch. And he gets the first down out across the 35. To near the 36-yard line, Anthony Bryant made the stop. Leroy Horde, again, shaken up on two plays ago. Horde having a seat on the bench. First down for the Wolverines. It's been a, what, 101 years, you said, since Virginia won 10 games. I believe they won 10 games their first year of football, if I'm not mistaken. First down from the 36. Quick give to the fullback and Jared Bunch for a couple of yards. Out to about the 40. Give him a gain of four. And Mike Sunbolt made the stop on the play. But I'll tell you, this Michigan offensive line really started asserting itself late in the first period of play. And it has really been no contest since then. Well, you wonder what the Minnesota coaches said at halftime. Because they could see the Dobbers drop of everybody on their defense. They could see they weren't going after people aggressively in that second quarter of Michigan going down the field. Have they been able to reinstill that in their defense? Galloway in motion on a second down and six. Jefferson. Alan Jefferson, world-class sprinter speed when he came out of Warren D. LaSalle High School in Detroit. But he has been injury-prone throughout his career. There's a flag down to the play. Sunbolt made the stop. And it is a personal foul against Minnesota. That is frustration. They've been pushed around since the beginning of the second quarter. They need to stop Michigan. They got them in a third down and about four to go, a situation where they could, and they make a stupid penalty. Personal foul, dead ball, off defense, first down. So off the costly penalty, 15-yarder. The football now at the 42-yard line. Leroy Horde continuing to walk it off, so to speak. And I think you're right. He just got the wind knocked out of him. He'll be all right. Slot to the bottom of your screen. Callaway in motion out of the slot. Jefferson. There's the speed. To the 35. Gain of about seven. Max Steven finally chased him down, had the angle to the near side. Sunbolt pursued from the defensive line. Playing defense and playing a disciplined defense has goes right back to desire. Minnesota had it early in this football game. It would have been a big win for them, a big win for this program. Ball hopes for Michigan just poured water on their desire in that second quarter. And they have not been able, you can see right now, they have not been able to get it back even with a halftime cap talk. Second down and seven yards to go from the 35 of Minnesota. Jefferson, oh, was met in the hole by John Leverant and driven back. Skeeter Ockrey was also there. That was a major league hit by John Leverant, and we talked about his many problems physically in three of his four years here. Watch the linebacker, Leverant, step up in the hole. Watch where he meets the back at the line of scrimmage. Mm. That's perfect, and he got the pop in there. But watch, he's celebrating, but where's his teammates? You know, if that had been the first play of the game, he'd had 10 guys rallying around him. They've lost that. I saw one guy come up and pat him on the back. Third down, no gain. Third and three, Michigan. Walker in motion. Taylor to the air. McMurtry to the 15-yard line for a first down. Lumpkin made the stop on the play, and Michigan continues to roll just inside the 15 of Minnesota. 28 to 7 here. Michigan leading Minnesota. Colorado as expected over lowly Kansas State and the Buffaloes zeroing in on their 11th win of the season. Florida State, boy, they've really come on since losing their first two games of the season. Auburn on top of Georgia. Ohio State has regained the lead on Wisconsin. Sigh of relief for my partner Stan White, who played linebacker for Woody Hayes in the late 60s and early 70s. When did you leave? 71, 72? 71 was the last football season. But uh, I tell you what, that's been a great rivalry my first year. As a sophomore, was Bo Schembechler's first year at Michigan. And, uh, of course, he was an assistant for Woody. He came up there and beat us, and uh, he's been beating us ever since. <laughs> we'll be back. Fuji, makers of quality film and cameras. Fuji, a new way of seeing things. And by UPS, 
fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. Wayne Larrabee, Stan White at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. That's our story, third period. Michigan on the drive once again, just inside the 15-yard line of Minnesota. Alan Jefferson into a crowd at about the 13-yard line. He got a couple of yards. Over to stack it up, Derek Fisher, the freshman cornerback, and Anthony Bryant. Two players are basically doing the damage for Michigan here today. Hoard, with 93 yards, he has bruised ribs and may not return today. And McMurtry has had the big day through the air. How about that? 253 of the three-plus yards. Out of the wishbone. Second down, about eight yards to go. attacking again off the left flank of the offensive line. This time he's inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Gets and Bryant on the stop for Minnesota. As the Gophers try to shore up the defense. One thing about the Michigan backs, they do block for each other as we see Greg McMurtry coming back into the game on third and four. Here we see Leroy Horde. He'd like to come back in and get this touchdown, I think. Michigan on a third down and about four. Taylor on the option. It is first and goal near the Minnesota three. Scott Strife made the stop for the Gophers. Should read Michael Taylor. 37 carries this season the wishbone respect the fullback he comes through and cleans up with a block right there opens the gap for Michael Taylor that's just the added element talking to Gutekus they'd love to see somebody else even Elvis Gerbach in there that doesn't have that added threat. Michigan with a double tight and we've got a timeout called timeout Minnesota with 953 left to go in the third Scott Strife heads over to the sidelines for a conference. Michigan in command and knocking on the door for more. Michigan sidelines, each team with two timeouts left. Both teams have had to take timeouts here in this third period of play, which is somewhat unusual. Michigan first and goal of the three-yard line of the Gophers. Don't read the lead back. Now the outside man right here, number four, has got to read. He lets the man run right by him. That's the man that's going to block him. If he doesn't, he's going out for the pass. Number four, Freddie Foggy, another mistake in reading. He has got to know if that man runs by him. It's a pass. He's got to cover it. J.D. Carlson for the point after. Out of the hold of Ken Solom, a backup quarterback. And the way things are going, Solomon may get into this ballgame <laughs> before this afternoon is over. Taylor's fourth touchdown pass. Coming up, we'll have more of this third period. Let's go to the studio and Bob Carpenter. All right, Wayne, and a bit of a surprise in Tuscaloosa. Brett Favre to Eugene Rowell. This one will cover 47 yards. Southern Miss, remember them? They upset Florida State first week of the season, and they're on top of number four, Bama. All right, Bob. Wow, that's surprising right there down south. There's our story coming up. Minnesota will go back to the offense and try to get something going. They haven't scored since and moved the ball with any kind of consistency since their opening drive of the game. Michigan has scored touchdowns on its last five possessions. Taylor has four touchdown passes here today. Well, as we talked about at the beginning of the game, a lot of teams do things differently on the first drive against Michigan. Takes a little bit of time for them to adjust to it. I'm sure they weren't happy with that touchdown drive, but they have adjusted well. For Gator is back deep. J.D. Carlson. Good, strong kick. Gators will not return this one. As he tumbles through the end zone. And it'll be first down for the 20-yard line. 
for Minnesota. 35 to 7 Michigan on top. So look at Bo Beckler. There's the latest Michigan scoring jaunt. And Alan Jefferson stretching his wings a bit. Junior out of Detroit, Michigan, who's been injury riddled throughout his Michigan career, but a guy with great speed and potential took it in. There he is. That artificial turf a little rough on the forearm. Yeah, you see the blood on his padding. All day long you have that artificial turf. Cummings in motion, first down. This is Thompson, and Daryl Thompson finds a bit of a seam out to the 26-yard line at a gain of six. Bobby Abrams made the stop. Here's the uh, possession chart for Minnesota to this point of the ball game. They score on their first possession, but then look at their drives. 37, 17. Lost two yards on a drive, got 31. Nine yards to the half. Michigan has really slammed the door. Markel Fleetwood, at quarterback, and Thompson gets the call, and Darrell Thompson crashes for the first down out near the 31-yard line. Veda Murray made the stop. 18 carry, 61 yards for DT, Darrell Thompson. He also scored the lone Minnesota touchdown of the afternoon. I'm sure Michigan at this point, the one thing that they want to continue is that streak they have, seven games of holding the opposition under 100 yards rushing. That's something a defense takes pride in. I'm sure everybody out there is thinking about that. First down for the Gophers just across their 31. had a pretty good day. Catches another one underneath the coverage. Gain of about uh, seven yards. Five catches, 49 yards for Tinglehoff. Murray and Milligan on the stop for Michigan. Good read. Watch the cornerback. David Key blitz. He knows he's open. The safety has to come all the way over. Veda Murray to make the tackle. But a good read by Markel Fleetwood and Pat Tinglehoff. A slight adjustment. When the corner comes, he breaks into a little hitch pattern. And if you hear the name Tinglehoff and it sounds familiar, it's because his father was a pretty good center for the Minnesota Vikings up here in Minneapolis. Darrell Thompson. Nothing's been easy for him today, Stan. You know, they haven't really been able to pop him. Beta Murray made the stop on that play, along with John Milligan. Uh, Darrell's long run was 27 yards. They, You know, we talked to John Gutekunst about that last night. He says, we just haven't been able to really pop Darrell for the big run. Of course, he has the Big Ten record 98-yard touchdown run against Michigan. I remember Bo Schembechler said he ran down the sideline. He was ready to come out to make a tackle. <laughs> that was the uh, day he ran for 200 yards against Michigan, the only back to do that. That was back in 1987. First down, Fleetwood. Tinglehoff was looking toward the sidelines, the pass thrown to the inside shoulder. Right here, Michigan leading 35-7. to seven. Let's go back to the studio and Bob Carpenter. And Wayne at Yale, the Bulldogs are fighting to win the Ivy League, but they've been down by three touchdowns until Darren Kaler, known for his running, goes up top to hit Peter Caravella for 35 yards. They're on their way back, but a long way to go. 21-7. All right, thank you, Bob. The game, Surprise, as they call right? it. Surprise, right? Yeah, that the is game. the yes. game, the Ivy League. Harvard, the headliner. Harvard had his problems earlier this year, coming back strong. Second and ten. Thompson into the The Gophers will take it. Down to the 28-yard line. Beta Murray, touchdown saving tackle. 30-yard run, his longest of the season. That puts him right around the 100-yard area. You see the counterplay. Watch him spring through the gap. Now watch the acceleration right there. Good blocking up front. And there's a the guy, no matter what the score is, going to keep giving you 100%. And that's why Mel Kuyper thinks he's going to be the first pick in the draft. Watch the hustle by Michigan. Two defensive backs. See, they make the tackles. Those are runs that are going for touchdowns against Minnesota. Fleetwood back to throw on first down over the middle. Intercepted by Trip Wilburn. And he's out to the seven-yard line. And for Trip Wilburn, his second interception of the season, the All-America. 
We were out here, Wayne, yesterday, and we saw the two-minute drill. We saw Markel Fleetwood just throw the ball to strong safety one time. Didn't even see him. He thinks he's got man-to-man -man coverage, but the strong safety is going back to the deep middle in a surprise coverage. Usually it's a free safety there. Trip Wellborn never saw him, threw it right to him. His second interception in two weeks. That's why he's the Kodak All-American. Outstanding career he's had at Michigan. When you see this, the free safety vacate the middle, the quarterback thinks man-to-man -man coverage. I can throw the post pattern. At that time, it's a little variation we've talked about that Michigan gives you. Strong safety rotated back to the deep middle. The quarterback never saw him. Big play for Michigan. First down for the Wolverines. Bernie Laquette, the fullback, gets the call. Out to the 10-yard line on a gain of three. There's John Gutekunst on the sideline. His program, his coaching staff, everybody in the athletic department carrying a little extra weight this fall. A former University of Minnesota official by the name of Luther Darville has been convicted of embezzling close to $200,000 from the university. Some of that money was given to some athletes back in the mid-'80s. There's also an NCAA investigation into the Minnesota Athletic Program, the results of which won't be known until early next year. Second down for Michigan, about six yards to go. Jefferson, nice bounce. And he's out to the 14-yard line. So John Gutekunst has had to deal with not only the uh, baggage, so to speak, of that case, but also with rebuilding a football program, trying to recruit trying to bring back this Minnesota football program, and it has not been easy, and this week he's had to prepare for the Michigan Wolverines. And he thought, quite uh, rightfully so, that maybe a big win not only could save this program, but the, his whole situation, because he got a new athletic director, Rick Bay, who quitted Ohio State when Earl Bruce was fired, is now the athletic director of Minnesota. A lot of times they make changes when they come in. Taylor, under pressure this time. The sack. Back near the five yard line. First sack by the Gophers today. Minnesota rarely blitzes. Talking to Dick Biddle, their defensive coordinator, he says he doesn't want to blitz. We got a flag down, by the way. I think it's probably going to be holding. It is holding against Minnesota. And they will decline that and take the sack. Minnesota, Michigan, rather. Right? Holding Watch against number Michigan. 57, Strife, coming from the bottom of your screen. They rarely, rarely blitz the outside linebacker, but it gives them five men, and it gives them a man-up situation where everybody has to block, and he beats Tom Doring, number 73. Man-to-man, -man, they can't help anybody. Place. It means they're gambling, because they hate to blitz, because they have a hard enough time playing zone, let alone man-to-man -man coverage. But why not gamble when it's 35-7, huh? Chris Stapleton on the punt for the first time since the first period of play. Coming after it, Gators from the 45 of Michigan. And he gets Minnesota yardage down to the 36. 40-yard punt, 8-yard return. Minnesota starting in its best field position to begin a drive. Takes over. The great games. The games fighting Irish snap Oklahoma's 47-game winning streak. And the sporting news was there. Well, they still have hopes on the sidelines here. Cheerleaders are always supposed to have hope, right? Especially when they're on camera. Yes. <laughs> 35 to 7. Michigan leading Minnesota, but here are the Gophers. First down to start this drive near the Michigan 36. Markel Fleetwood in a quarterback. Darrell Thompson. He got one block on the flank. They Sealed off Milligan, the linebacker, but when he cut it back, he ran into nothing but white jerseys. J.J. Grant and Trip Welburn. Pickup of yardage down uh, to about the 34, gain of a couple. Darrell Thompson now 99 yards on 21 carries. the coverage on the near side. 
John Bentley, the intended receiver. Bentley, a sophomore out of Mount Carmel High School in Chicago. Fleetwood, 5 of 14, 49 yards and an interception. Of course, Scott Schaffner was 8 of 10 for 85 yards in the first half. You wonder, has the change really been a good change? Third down and eight now for Minnesota. Yeah, you wonder, don't you? <laughs> Fleetwood under pressure. Nice throw. Tingle off for the first down. Near the 18-yard line of Michigan. And Milligan made the tackle. Well, the mobility of Markel Fleetwood got this job done. Again, he buys the time. This is a similar pattern to what uh, McMurtry's been catching, the long crossing pattern. You see how long he takes? That's just because of the, that's the add dimension that he can add. There's Pat Tinglehoff, but that Markel Fleetwood can add his escapability. Defenses do not enjoy that for sure, but you have to have the accuracy also. Darrell Thompson down to the 15, gain of three. Brent White made the stop. That puts DT over 100 yards. John Kunigunz looking out of the sidelines. Good, solid football, man. He coached defense at uh, Virginia Tech when they had Bruce Smith down there. Sure and did. Jesse Penn, right? Jesse Penn, several NFL players. He's always been on the defensive side of the ball, where I think one year he was an offensive coach, but he does call all the plays here. He felt he wanted to be able to control an area of his program, and he felt most of the control in the football game is from the offensive standpoint. Fleetwood on second down at seven. Oh, and he snuck it into Gators. Nice throw underneath the coverage of Todd Blake near the 10-yard line. Let's go back to Bristol and Bob Carpenter. All right, Wayne, number one, Notre Dame at Penn State, and Blair Thomas will get the Nittany Lions into the end zone early with a one-yard run. Lions are 6-2 and two against the Irish in the 80s and off to a good start. And, of course, Bob, Penn State is one of six ranked opponents on the Notre Dame schedule this year. Tell you something, it's it's hard to get up for every game you've got to play like that. Penn State has won all four games at home against Notre Dame at Beaver Stadium. Third down and a yard. Daryl Thompson is the man they call on, and he didn't get there. Daryl Thompson got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it. He was stormed back by Teeter and Milligan. I think it's safe to say they'll go for it, Wayne. Well, <laughs> game situation, 2.13 to go in the third. You're down 35 to 7. Uh, yeah, I'd say this is four down territory. <laughs> You've got it at the nine. You can see what Michigan did, though. Third one, they just brought everybody squeezed off every hole. Now they go to the wishbone. Late run optioning. First down and more. Down to the five-yard line. Mark Cal would look very comfortable on that option run. And again, he said he would not change his offense, but with the Fleetwood in the game, he would run the option off the wishbone a little bit more. You see the speed? Now watch him duck to the inside and just get that first down yardage. Good move. He knew how far he had to get. So it's first and goal for Minnesota, the Michigan five-yard line. Fleetwood on an option again. And he may have made the three-yard line. Gain of a yard or two. Alex Marshall got over in a hurry. You don't fool Michigan often, and you rarely fool them twice in a row. Well, he was in a position where the pitch would have been the right option on that series. Alex Marshall had the pitch man who would have been Daryl Thompson if the play would have been executed. Marshall faked like he was going towards Thompson and went back in to make the tackle. Gain of a yard to the four-yard line. Second down and goal to go for the Gophers. Double tight ends in the game. Thompson is the tail of the tandem of the offset eye. Darrell Thompson didn't have a chance. He lost a yard back to the five-yard line. Nobody blocked David Key and Bobby Abrams coming in from the far side. Well, I think there was only ten men in the field, Wayne. They had two backs You're right, and everybody had two, backs, in the line had two tight ends. So we only had 10 men, so there's nobody to block for the backside. Right there, the two backside men 
no blockers, nobody to cover. So the fact there's only 10 men, we see one man come out and two go in now. There was no flanker out there. Exactly. Fleetwood just made a count. Hey, wait a minute, let's make sure we've got everybody here. The key is Michigan rec recognized that, knew they had no coverage, and just sent their men. Smart enough to see, when I don't have anybody, go ahead and blitz. Thompson, a long setback. Cummings in motion off the wing. Third down goal to go for the five. Fleetwood trying to thread the needle. Penalty marker down. Pass interference. Tinglehoff, the intended receiver on the slant toward the middle. David Key was on his back. Time expires on the scoreboard here in this third period of play. However, they have to decide on the penalty first. Pass interference against the Michigan Wolverines as signaled by Jerry Hendrickson. One more on time play. Defensive pass interference in the end zone. The ball is on the two yard line. There'll be one untimed. No, there's one untimed down. <laughs> he was yelling to Markel Fleet with a quarterback who was heading over to the sidelines. Just a quick slant, watch him draped on his back from the outside in. See, it's uh, real close, but I think at this point you're going to give the benefit of the doubt there and call pass interference. Bo saying, why? <laughs> oh, why? Because he was all over him. That's why. One untimed play here. The quarter cannot end on a defensive penalty. That's so you don't get the wind advantage. Fleetwood, touchdown! Signal for two. They're going for two. Gophers will try a two-point conversion here. So they have broken a string of 35 consecutive Michigan points over the course of the second and third periods. Tell you what, their options look good, Wayne. And yes, remember, it is. they were an option team under Ricky Foggy. They changed away from that because of two reasons. They didn't have anybody to replace Ricky Foggy, and they had Daryl Thompson wanted to get him the ball more. Maybe thinking about going back to it right now. John Gutekunst looking out from the sidelines, head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Now they'll try the two-point conversion. They've got a slot to the top of your screen. Gators in the slot coming in motion. Lead one. He's going to make it. Two point conversion. So the Golden Gophers have cut the deficit to 35 to 15. The added element right here, the extra man you can't defend down on the goal line. That's where the option is most effective. Now here's what he also can do out of pass situation where everybody's covered. Watch him just go in for the two point conversion just by run out running people. So the Gophers trying to make a stand as we head to the fourth period of play. Wayne Larrabee, Stan White, that's the story. Minnesota well, trying to make a stand now. They'll try to stop and contain the Wolverines and get the ball back. and. I imagine Michigan would be expecting the possibility of an onside kick. Markel Fleetwood engineered a 10 play 36 yard drive. Began with defense sack of uh, Taylor backed up Michigan. Good field position. Got the ball inside the 50 yard line and Michigan does have their hands team in the game. All right. Aaron Pipecorn on the kickoff. When he tries here, he's going to kick it all the way. Has been to Howard, a back deep to the goal line. Howard trying to hit a seam, knocked down on the play by Andre Davis at the 20 yard line. Elsewhere in college football today, Nebraska, well out in front of Oklahoma. Boy, I tell you, that used to be for all the marbles every year. Michigan State is taking command over Northwestern. Iowa shutting out Purdue in the fourth. Yale is right back in it with arch rival Har Har uh, Harvard. In the game, as they call it. 
hammered on that a little bit. Harvard, <laughs> I didn't expect them to be on top of that game. Yale going for a, an Ivy title. And right here, Michigan. On offense with a still hefty advantage. Callaway in motion. On first down. Jefferson into the clear. Oh, man. He was one man away from breaking it all the way. Doug Evans, the safety, made the stop. 18-yard gain. Watch the Michigan line open up the hole right here. Just to get in a straight isolation play following the big fullback, Leggett. What's the tackling? No tackling there by the defensive back, Morris Lawler, or by Sean Lumpkin. Finally, they do drag him down, but your front line's not going to be able to make a tackle every time. If you look at tackles, usually your defensive safeties are in the top five or six guys. They have to come up and be able to some help support the running game. From the 38, Michigan out of first down. You said Bernie Leggett was big, and he takes the football on about a two-yard power move that time out to the 40-yard line. He is 240 pounds at 6'1", a freshman out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. A true freshman. Hasn't been redshirted, playing. Michigan's playing some true freshmen this year. They usually don't do that, but Bernie Leggett's one of the people they've had to play. That yardage by quarters, that second quarter just jumps out of you, doesn't it? 256 yards and 28 points. Second down, eight yards to go. Jefferson out to the 46 yard line, two yards short of the first down. 13.45 left to go in this game. Ron Mertz and Doug Evans made the stop of the play. Some extracurricular activity going on, but nothing of an inordinate amount. Now from the 46, Michigan on a third down. There's a look at what they've done. You take 28 points away from this game, and <laughs> we've okay. got a nail for it here going <laughs> yeah. on. Take away the second quarter there, Stan. Of course, you can't do that. Jefferson, first down and more! To the 38-yard line. Michigan well on the road to the Rose Bowl. No question about that. Stamps and Fisher made the stop on that play. Take a look at the possibilities for Michigan once again. If they defeat Minnesota and Ohio State loses to Wisconsin, Michigan goes, regardless of what happens next week against Ohio State. Another uh, scenario is, regardless of what happens here today, if Michigan beats Ohio State, they go to the Rose Bowl. So the Wolverines truly in the run for the Roses in control, in firm control of their own destiny. Injury timeout on the field. One of the Gophers shaking up on the play. Back it up. We've got a break of the action. We'll return with 13-11 left to go. College football Saturday. Michigan and Minnesota is brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. Great American Road belongs to Buick. By Campbell's Chunky Suits, a satisfying stop that keeps you going. And by Anheuser-Busch, we brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, know when to say when. Wayne Larrabee, Stan White of the Metrodome. That's our story. Michigan on the drive of the first and ten. Balanced offense for the Wolverines. 203 on the ground, 212 through the air. Taylor off play action. Callaway with a first down of the 19-yard line of Minnesota. My goodness. Callaway and McCurtry have been loose all afternoon in that Gopher secondary. Fred Foggy made the stop on the play along with Doug Evans. Again, I would rather see a defensive back, as Foggy did earlier, get beat on the hook and go, play aggressively than just to lay off and let people catch the ball all day long. He was he had a 10-yard cushion on that. The ball was wobbling. It took a long time to get there, and he never was in the picture. Taylor, 12 of 16, 231 yards and four touchdown passes. First down to the 19 of Minnesota. Jerry, that bunch was hit in the middle of the line by Bob Coughlin early, and Doug Evans came in a little bit later. Let's go out to uh, Bristol to the studio, and Bob Carpenter with an update. All right, Wayne, and we will update number one Notre Dame at Penn State, and Tony Rice will match what Blair Thomas did earlier. He's in from five yards out. And in the first quarter, the Irish and the Lions are tied. 
Tell you something, Bob. But that's going to be a that's going to be a tight win all afternoon. Penn State. Joe Paterno's had a formula against Notre Dame, hasn't he? I don't know Notre Dame's too strong this year, I think. Second down. Wolverines continue to pound it. John Fawn, the latest halfback, getting the uh, call. Freshman from Florissant, Missouri. Mertz and Miles in on the stop. The storyline in this ball game. McMurtry, the star thus far, with three touchdowns. Michigan scored touchdowns on five straight drives. And then Taylor's had success through the air. Michigan, overwhelming in total yardage. Yeah, I don't think you had to go by the first line of that storyline to uh, really tell you the story of this football game. Greg, uh, Greg McMurtry, seven catches, 165 yards, three touchdowns. Third down. who has known more than his share of frustration throughout his Michigan career hits the end zone for the first time this year. The Big Ten is a physical conference, Wayne. And let me tell you, it's just a matter of one team being more physical than the other. Just going at people. They're waiting at the line of scrimmage. Watch the bust outside. Now watch the defensive backs. They're sitting back waiting for them. Where are they? They don't hit them to the two-yard line. they got to come up and make some plays. They have it all day. Jefferson 76 yards on 11 carries and a touchdown. J.D. Carlson is through on the extra point. Michigan has answered Minnesota's second half. Touchdown with a scoring drive of its own. And Bowen Company are in firm control of this one. Some people. Wayne Larrabee, Stan White, that's our story. Fourth period of play. Michigan going 80 yards on that latest scoring drive. And Jefferson, a 15-yard touchdown run. He's had uh, knee problems, tendonitis in his knees. Had all kinds of problems in terms of calcium uh, deposits in his leg last year. That kept him out a good portion of the season. But uh, he was a tremendous talent in high school. And the injuries have held him back in college, and I'm sure he's enjoying this day. Alan Jefferson. J.D. Carlson uh, restarts the game with a good high kick to Chris Gators from the two. the 25 yard line they'll mark it at about the 24 Dwayne Ware forced him out of the far side around college football this afternoon Alabama has recovered taking a hefty lead on Mississippi there's Oklahoma trailing Nebraska Sooners coming back Auburn has defeated Georgia now Harvard with seven points on the board Extends the lead over Yale and Ohio State leading Wisconsin. Buckeyes looking for that big matchup with Michigan next week here. Obviously what the Ohio State uh, group is looking for is a victory there and an Indiana victory over Illinois today would make that game next week for the Rose Bowl. Fleetwood. Tinklehoff. I said here I meant in the Big Ten. Ohio and Ohio State and uh, Michigan. Wayne Ware forced out Tinglehoff, along with Trip Welburn. First down for on a 13-yard gain for Minnesota. Tinglehoff's had a good day. Seven catches, 77 yards. Came in with 16 receptions on the season. Well, they, you know Michigan's going to give you those short patterns. Somewhere along the line, they're going to change up on you. They're going to give you that little variance where it either causes an interception, a sack, a fumble. Gators in motion on first down. Patrick Cummings gets his second call of the day. Out to the 40-yard line. Gain of about three. Mike Teeter in the interior portion of the defense, along with Mike Evans on the stop for Michigan. There were the numbers coming in for Cummings, so he's about to equal the number of times he's carried the ball. The fullback in this offense, Stan, is not going to carry the football a lot. He's going to be the motion man in this offense, almost like an H-back, and they'll move him around to put him in different blocking positions. Yeah, they call him the S-back here. Really, he's a lead blocker no matter which side the running play goes. Second down and seven. Darrell Thompson. Oh, man, he ran into his own blocker, Patrick Cummings. If we, the officials had whistled the play dead after the ball popped loose, or before the ball popped loose, I should say, out of the 46-yard line. He ran into Cummings. Otherwise, he might have been able to bounce that to the outside for big yardage. You're right. Cummings went one way. Thompson cut back to that direction. And Cummings just was caught loitering in the hole. 
this is the first time in seven weeks that an opponent has put 100 yards rushing on the board against uh, Michigan. A team has put 100 a team, yards I rushing. I should say, yeah. Not just an individual, but a team. The wishbone on third and one. Darrell Thompson, as expected. And as expected, he picks up the first down of the midfield marker. Milligan was there for Michigan, along with Brian Townsend. Little smile from uh, Daryl Thompson as he stuck his hand out. Nobody took a hold of it. <laughs> yeah. Michigan said, uh, you can run the ball, but you're going to have to get up yourself. <laughs> we're, even though we're this far ahead, we're not ready to get friendly yet. After all, the little brown jug is at stake here. <laughs> you think they can uh, safely put that on their shoulders? You think they can lock it up and put it on the equipment truck? First down from the 50. Fleetwood on the roll. Ran into some traffic there and might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Chris Hutchinson in on the stop along with Mike Teeter continuing the updates. College football today. Michigan leading big here. Colorado winning big over Kansas State. Buffalo's closing in on their first 11 win season. Tennessee trails Mississippi. Tech leading SMU. BYU rolling it up on Utah. Out to the whack. Ohio State in command over Wisconsin. From the midfield marker, second and ten. Darrell Thompson. Marvelous run by Thompson. Kept his balance, bounced it to the outside, and picked up a first down to the 37-yard line. You may say, why haven't, up. excuse me, why haven't they been doing this before? Well, the key is right now, Michigan, the defensive line is just letting everything go. They're rushing the passer. That opens some lanes on the draw plays, and then his ability takes over when he can get past that line of scrimmage, past all that beat uh, that Michigan has up front. 14 yards on that pickup to a first down from the 36, Minnesota. Hutchison and Townsend were raining down on the quarterback. And one thing Daryl Thompson forgot to do that time was block. He passed up his man, and he's the guy that ended up getting the sack. We can't see it. It's before this, but Townsend was the outside linebacker, and he was the man that Daryl Thompson was supposed to be blocking. See, the knee is down before the ball is released. As soon as the knee touches the ground, plays over, and the ball is spotted where the ball is at the point the knee touches. Second down and 18 yards to go. Fleetwood again to the air, and here come the Wolverines. Screens it out, Darrell Thompson. Cut down out of bounds by Eric Anderson. Anderson is quite a hitter. His father and grandfather both played in pro football, and Eric Anderson hopes someday to aspire to a pro career, perhaps. Switched from fullback to linebacker two years ago. Tied for the team lead in tackles last year with 77, and he's the leading tackler this year with 73. And there's Daryl Thompson against Michigan in his career. We talked with him yesterday, kind of asked him, uh, what do you think, Michigan? I mean, uh, you're a little in awe of Michigan, and he kind of matter-of-factly said, no, I, I can run the football against Michigan. I've done it in the past, and indeed he has. Third down at 14. Fleetwood. Oh, they blitz Welburn, but Fleetwood got away. Intended for Gators and a great play by Beta Murray to break it up at the 15. Came with the blitz from Welburn. Let's see if we can pick it up. Again, the blitz is coming from the strong safety. He escapes the strong safety blitz. Watch the tight end downfield. He's wide open, but he throws it right over his head to the man behind him and Beta Murray while the ball's in the air can close the gap at the tight end. If you see the ball go right over his head, yeah. wide open, nobody around him. You got to pick up that first jersey and get the ball to him, not throw it downfield in the crowd. Fourth down, and the Gophers on fourth and 14 are going for it. Of course, he did have a few distractions yeah. on that play. Leanwood. Over the top for Tinglehoff. Pass over, thrown incomplete. Made a Murray defending along with David Key. 
So Michigan takes over on downs at the 40 yard line in Wolverine territory. Michigan leading 42 to 15 with 650 left to be played. Got a timeout taken here at the Metrodome. Michigan smelling roses and a big matchup with Ohio State on the near horizon. You know, the first time that jug came into play, Minnesota fans stormed the field and basically Michigan forgot the jug and left it there. Minnesota claimed the jug after a 6-6 tie back in 1903. Today, uh, they are going to make sure the fans don't storm the field and steal the jug back, so to speak. I think it's heading back to Ann Arbor. 6.50 to go in this ball game. Michigan leading 42 to 15. Wolverines with the ball. Elvis Gerback at quarterback. And here's John Vaughn. Eddie Miles made the uh, stop. Elvis Gerback filled in earlier this year when Taylor was injured, went out with a back injury. He started, what, almost three games. Started earlier this year. Matter of fact, he still ranks fourth in the Big Ten in pass efficiency. Well, Elvis Gerback. He came in and completed 17 out of 21 against Notre Dame when Michael Taylor was hurt in that first game of the year. And again, but for those two kickoff returns to Rocket Ishmael, he would have led them to a victory. And Michigan might be on top of the pole. Second down and eight. Jokic in motion. Gerbach. Hits Dan Jokic. And he's got it out of the 50-yard line, about a half yard short of the first down. Lots going out of college football. Let's go back to the studio for an update with Bob Carpenter. All right, Wayne, it looked like Yale was going to come back and win, but Harvard's taking control. Quarterback Tim Perry in from one, and Harvard leads it now by a score of 34 to 20. Meanwhile, at Princeton is 21-7 in the fourth over Cornell. Looks like a tie for the conference title with Yale and Princeton. Thank you, Bob. Third down and less than a yard to go. Michigan in the wishbone. Jefferson almost broke through that line of defense into the clear for a touchdown. Les O'Hara made the stop. Jefferson on a gain of about 10 yards. He has 86 yards and 12 carries now. Well, you got a defense right now, Wayne, that's demoralized, that they're playing on their heels, that uh, almost the mindset, let's just get out of here. Don't get hurt, let's just get out of here and come back for next week. And you'll see some big plays pop when you get a defense to that point. And I know I played defense, you get to that mindset when a team is just driving you down time and time again. Vaughn is the tail of the tandem in the eye. First down to the Minnesota 41. Jokic comes in motion. Vaughn, big hole to the 28 yard line for a Michigan first down. Strife and O'Hara, along with Andre Thaddeus, on the stop. Man, I'm telling you something. You could have put a couple of semis through that hole. Bo's even smiling a little bit. Look at this hole. You talk about trucks, semi, any, you can put anything in there. Nobody wanted a part of it. You can see it almost looked like it was a warm up drill that you run against the skeleton defense. And I feel feel badly for this Minnesota defense at this time because I've been out there in those situations. It's tough to sit down there and try to keep holding up your, your, your pants and keep going. First down just outside the 27 of Minnesota. Leggett. He is a big guy. Down to the 18-yard line. Evans and Burt team up on the stop. Again on a gain of about eight yards. What well, goes to show you, it's not the style of defense you play, it's the people that you have playing, and uh, John Kudikus knows that very well. Four minutes left to be played. Michigan leading 42-15. And the Wolverines on the drive, led by Elvis Gerbach, quarterback, in place of Michael Taylor, who had an outstanding afternoon. Michigan continues to work the offense to perfection. Desmond Howard and Elvis Gerback just the latest to work it. This is Andre Thott is another defensive back that I don't know. I don't know why you play back there. You don't play in the end zone. What good does it make good you do to make a tackle in the end zone? 
look at the look at the oh just completely faked that one it was just an easy move just that much cushion I mean, he's got the end zone behind him it's uh you know you just can't explain it other than they've been just completely you know, knocked Michigan. off their their senses defensively michigan was uh forced to take a timeout they didn't have enough people on the field and we will take a timeout come back for the final 343. wayne larrabee and stan white michigan really has ripped this one wide open and they did actually back in the second period of play they led 28 to 7 at halftime Increased the advantage to 35 to 7 before Minnesota got a score. And now Michigan is answered with a couple of touchdowns here. And this is the point after. And the kick is up, and it is good. Take one more look at the touchdown. Just a quick slant pass, but it's easy. The ball is not even a spiral. You see the ball float in there, but there's no defensive back even close enough to close in on that. I mean, redundant to say that the defensive backfield is a major problem for uh, Minnesota at this point. Well, outside of the first period of play, though, the Michigan execution has been outstanding. Let's take a look at what happened in the second quarter, because that's really the story of the ball game. That's where the game was, was blown wide open by the Michigan Wolverines. McMurtry, 49-yard touchdown reception from Taylor. Again, he comes back, this time 34 yards away. Michigan takes the lead. Ford on a 29-yard explosion. Michigan up 21-7. And then McMurtry on a 25-yard touchdown reception. Michigan four scores in that second period, and they have the advantage by 21 points at halftime, and they have built on it since, although Minnesota was able to come back for one score here in the second half. J.D. Carlson. It's the kick underway, a high boot. Gators from the five. Got out to about the 19, maybe the 20 yard line. 3.38 left to go here at the Metrodome. Let's go back to Bob Carpenter for an update. And Wayne, they're early in the second quarter at Penn State, and Notre Dame will get on the board again. Ricky Waters bounces off a tackler, and he'll go right side 12 yards for the score. Irish on top, 14 to 10, early second quarter. That Notre Dame team is loaded. You know, we talk about the Rocket, his two kick returns are the only loss that Michigan has at this point. We've seen how good Michigan is. They are a tremendous football team. The Irish hold a victory over Michigan. On the carry, Marcus Evans gets the call. Minnesota and Michigan trying to wind things down here with 327 to go. Williams and Spencer made the stop for the Wolverines. Everybody's going to get Everybody that came over here on the bus is going to get into this one. I don't think we'll see Daryl Thompson anymore. He got over 100 yards today. He did his job. Minnesota was able to run a bit on Michigan, but it really didn't matter. Fleetwood gets it out to Gators, who's gobbled up immediately on the play. Wayne Ware stuck to him like glue, and short of a first down out across the 15 are the Gophers. They face the third down and about a yard to go. Well, Minnesota, this game probably kills their uh, bowl hopes. Michigan, obviously, they're looking to win their second consecutive outright Big Ten title. Now, it would be the first time since the Michigan State teams under Duffy Doherty that a Big Ten team has repeated an outright title in consecutive seasons. Fleetwood on an option, didn't get there for the first down. Brought down at the line of scrimmage of the 19. That's amazing when you think about it, Stan. Now, there have been teams that have tied for the conference championship, won an outright championship, tied for the conference championship the next year. But not since the Duffy Doherty Michigan State team in the mid-60s has a Big Ten team repeated an undisputed Big Ten title. Ohio State and Michigan have tied several times back and forth for the conference championships and then won it outright a year themselves. In fact, no team in the 1980s, Wayne, has gone to the Rose Bowl two years in a row. This would be the first time. Michigan trying to do that here. Markel Fleetwood really subjecting himself to uh, some punishment, but I believe he did get the first down on fourth and one. Dwayne Ware, one of the principal defenders on the play, along with Otis Wilson, uh, Otis Williams. Take a look at what Bo Schembechler has done in 21 years. 20 years so far going into this one. This is his 21st year, of course. 12 Big Ten titles going for number 13. Look at that against Big Ten teams, that winning percentage. 
at 16 bowl games, you got to remember for a long time you couldn't go to any bowl game except for the Rose Bowl. He had a three-year period where he was 32 and one and never went to a, row, a bowl game. First down for the Gophers. Fleetwood under some pressure. Marcus Evans, the running back out of the backfield, out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, not a gain of six yards. Tim Williams made the stop along with Rusty Finchner. That's our story. We're in the final two minutes of play. Of course, Rusty Feetner, the uh, defensive player you just referred to, his dad, Ross Feetner, played for a long time for the Cleveland Browns in the NFL and was an NFL coach for the Packers. I beg your pardon. It is Rusty Feetner. Big showdown coming up next week. Ohio State and Michigan. Marcus Evans fielding his oats a bit. Close to the first down. I think the game we have coming up next, uh, Wayne, is going to be a good one. Virginia and Maryland, of course, Virginia again going for its uh, first ACC title, first 10 game win season. And Maryland, of course, coming off last week's tie against Penn State is going to be a formidable opponent at home for Virginia. And coming up tonight, 15th ranked Clemson, the in state rivalry of South Carolina. That's always a great ball game. First down. Fleetwood hit from behind as he throws the middle, and it is intercepted by Mark Spencer. Spencer out to the 45-yard line. Marcus Evans made the stop on the play, and that certainly, well, this one's been long put away, but that brings us to a juncture where we'd like to take an opportunity to thank all the people, the technicians, the truck people, everybody that has worked with us on this Big Ten season here on ESPN and certainly uh, David Dinkins our producer Ken Fout Susie Evans in the truck some of the principal people Al Killian and his crew the job they've done they've been outstanding they've done a super job camera people technicians it's been a great season uh, to be with tremendous professionals on uh, the Big Ten road this year it's been fun for me Wayne I've enjoyed it especially coming back to the Big Ten being able to visit some old haunts and oh uh, yeah looking forward to future ones John Vaughn and he's got about eight yards inside the 40 yard line Doug Evans over to make the stop final 10 seconds tick away the Michigan Wolverines 